Let's open this meeting at 6.30. <coughs> Um, first, we have public input. Seeing that there is none, um, we will go on to the student report. And we have Samantha. Is it? Do you prefer Samantha or Sam? Samantha, Samantha Galvin, class of 2020, with the student report. All right. Hello, everyone. So I'm just going to jump right in with the recent academic matters. Um, AP registration opened last Monday, February 4th, and many teachers are hosting their own practice AP exams in preparation for those in March and April. The three honor essayists for graduation have been identified, and they also received the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents Certificate of Excellence. That was Michael Tyrell, Molly Pfeffer, and Samantha Martell. Um, Academic Decathlon placed, scored a number of medals in topics ranging from optics to 1960s social science to Bob Dylan lyrics in their competition against Acton Boxborough on February 2nd. And juniors have decided the course selection process. Juniors have started the course selection process for next year through their Plus Portal accounts, and sophomores and freshmen will be starting that process as well in the coming weeks. Um, Moving on to sports, registration for spring sports is starting through Family ID now that fall sports are coming to a close. Both boys and girls track won the Cape and League Championship with several athletes going on to compete in states. Girls came out on top with a score of 78.5 points and the boys as well. Girls basketball is one win away from making it to states and both girls and boys basketball are having their senior games this week. And the boys basketball team is hosting a Burgers for Benefits fundraiser tonight at Fuddruckers from 5 to 8 p.m. in Reading inside Jernard's Furniture. Junior wrestler Sean McCullough won the 182 Division II title, Feb Division II title on February 10th. And swim team also had many victories. They competed at sectionals at MIT on Saturday, February 9th. And Molly Pfeffer, Melanie Pfeffer, Christina Valenti, Ollie Grabar, Brianna Saunders, and Nicole Steinmeier all qualified for states, which will be held next Saturday at BU, I believe. Going on to fine arts, Notorious is competing in the ICHSA competition on February 16th at Danvers High School. And they're performing their competition set at a free concert during Second Power Block in the Performing Arts Center on February 13th, which is something unique to this year. Students don't, other students don't normally get the opportunity to see their shows. And Masters is competing their show March 2nd, right here in the Performing Arts Center, and they're doing a public performance of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe at 6.30 on February 24th. Um, tickets are $5, and that will allow you to see our show and Wakefield High School show. Um, other important information is the date for junior prom has been set at for April 5th. And at the 2019 Harvard Model United Nations trip, Michael Tyrell won an honorable mention award in the AD 1227 Mongol Empire. 14 other students, including myself, had the opportunity to attend the conference held at the Sheraton Hotel in Boston, which was a really fun, amazing experience. Adventure Club is hosting a whitewater rafting trip June 9th. And finally, Student Council combined forces with Ms. Carter to sell cupcakes for Valentine's Day to raise money for both Ms. Carter's class and for the Student Council. Today, for um, my example of student work, I brought a physics project. Um, the goal was to create a car out of paper, straws, um, little wheel pasta for the wheels, and tape. And the goal was to create a car with a sufficient enough crumple zone so that way the egg wouldn't crack when it went down the ramp. And each time we would raise the ramp. So we were basically designing the crumple zone with the impulse momentum theorem in mind. So it was combining engineering and the physics formulas that we had learned. And it was a pretty cool experiment, because you always see that little project done on like TV, and we got to actually do it in class. So I have some pictures of the car in here. If you want to 
How did your egg hold up? Did you succeed? We succeeded in every um, trial but the last one because our seatbelt came untouched. Oh, no. <laughs> the egg flew out when it hit, even though the car didn't break. So there must have been a recall on that model of the car then for that, yeah. that year. Good job. My kind of student report, there's pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had another question, and it could be for you or Mr. Bernard. When, when the students choose their classes using the, the what is it, the plus portal? Plus portal. Is there a, is a limit set on the numbers that can sign up, or do can as many sign up as you want as want to sign up? Of course, and it's decided if you're going to have one section, two Correct. sections. Right, there's that no, how it works. Yes, there's no limit on the number initially. In so the, it's not like in college where the student just gets once they no. reach a certain number, they get they get right. shut out. And then the sections would be divided <laughs> appropriately by the number of students that expressed interest in that class. Okay. <laughs> The you know, only other thing I would add is uh, I went to the middle school performance of mm -hmm. Adam's Family, which is very good. My, uh, my family loved it. My kids were watching other ones on YouTube afterwards, and my son just kept saying, oh, ours was way better. There was way more people involved in it, because there was like 100 kids in the production. And so that was part of it. It was. Like, there was kids everywhere when they were dancing, so it was fun. I just couldn't get over the, the artistic everything that they, they produced, from the singing, dancing, the backdrop, that backdrop looked like it was professionally done, and they hand painted it themselves, if I remember correctly. So it was just, they did a very good job. One other thing I wanna, two other things actually on sports. The uh, girls basketball team actually won again, so they, they're qualified for the states now, and the girls hockey team um, with Peabody and Linfield is also qualified for the state tournament. Nice. So it's been a good, good winter season. Good winter season. <clears throat> Thank you. You're more than welcome to stay if you'd like. <laughs> you say that every time, and oh, I no know. one's ever stayed. You know, well, I think Michael did there for a couple of minutes because he had another presentation to <laughs> right, do. Right, right. So. Thanks. Um, next, we have a presentation from the representatives of the North. East Metropolitan Regional Vocational School, and I will hand it over to Mr. Bernard to pronounce their names correctly. Because <laughs> I don't. Yeah. So, Madam Chairman, thank you. Um, I'm honored to introduce to all of you tonight, um, and, and many of you have seen um, Judy Diamond, who is uh, North Reading's representative to the Northeast Regional School Committee. Judy, thank you again for coordinating your folks uh, to come tonight and speak to the to the committee and the community about what's going on at your school. And um, also with Judy is Dave DeBarry, who's in the middle. He's the superintendent director at the vocational school. And Jay Picone is the finance director. So thank you to both of you for, for joining Judy. So I think um, without too much uh, in the way of introduction, I think what, what, what might be most beneficial for, for the committee is to just hear um, where things are um, with you folks in terms of your school building project and any other information, Madam Chairman, correct, that, um, that folks think uh, you, 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 know, you would want to highlight um, for the school and, and maybe with an eye toward uh, a North Reading focus specifically. And before you go, Judy, I do just want to say publicly that um, I appreciate very much the work that, um, that Mr. DeBarry did with me uh, back a few months ago when we were looking to um, engage the vocational school students in the construction of some, some softball dugouts at our new softball field where we're optimistic that that um, project has not been uh, permanently shelved, where we're looking to maybe move forward with that project at a later date. But um, while we didn't move forward on the timeline that we had hoped initially, I, I appreciate very much the cooperation that I got from, from Mr. DeBarry on, on behalf of that project um, and the interest that, that North Reading had. So thank you, Dave. Yeah, I think, I think our hope might be um, to have something at this June town meeting. <clears throat> that is a hope. That's the hope. For funding. And if we do give funding this June town meeting, then move yeah. forward next next yeah. fall. We, we received some very impressive um, yeah, they drawings, were you know, uh, computer generated architectural drawings. Plans were perfect. Everybody on the um, athletic subcommittee was um, was supportive of the plans. So it's just a matter of finding the finding the money to get the materials. So. But hopefully that'll happen. Hopefully coming soon. So thank All right, you. great. Appreciate that. And if that doesn't work out, I need a shed, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, you better look in your ethics book there, Scott. Oh. I don't think that's allowed. <laughs> well, we'd like to thank you for the invite again. I mean, I can't believe it's been a year already. I know. And you still look very good, John. You're still very young. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't lost any more hairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Um, we, we always take great delight in spreading the word about the wonderful works that's being done at our school and the success. And I know you're all very anxious to have an update from Mr. Pacone as far as where we are with the new school project. And it's funny you mentioned the baseball field because Dave keeps me, uh, you know, up to date on everything. We just were talking about that tonight. And I was very disappointed that that was not moving forward. I couldn't understand that. So it, I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah. And you're, you're still on our list. <laughs> and we'll keep you there. So hopefully it, it works. What happened was that our um, our uh, athletic revolving fund is probably going to end up with about $14 in balance this year because we had some increased costs in other areas. Uh, one of the big ones was we had a large participation in girls hockey this year. And uh, we have to pay their, um, their the fees to Peabody. And that kind of ate up a lot of the funds we were hoping to use. And there really wasn't, no, with the no, way the budget's looking, there really wasn't any way we could you know, we, we get could make that it, work. it happens to us too yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you know it's a we, we try to do those type of community yep. projects and I think we keep the, the cost as low as possible oh and, yeah yeah and believe me our students take great pride in those projects right so uh, right. that's why we're that's why we're looking forward to hopefully getting it done um, this right. unit town meeting we'll, we'll look forward to hearing about that anyway at this point I'm sure you probably want to hear more about the uh, new school project I'll turn that over to mr. Bacone and then uh, mr. DeBerry has some uh, great new things that we're doing that he can discuss too. Right. But feel free to ask any one of us any questions. Oop, let me get this out of the way. Hi, how are you? Thank you for inviting us tonight. Um, we are in, uh, well, as you know, we're in, we just were invited to the MSBA program. We're going to be officially invited to the program in, in, uh, at the end of April. Um, so at that point in time, <clears throat> we'll be starting. Um, the first part of the process uh, is to go out for our OPM, um, our owner's project manager, after which time, uh, after the OPM is selected, uh, then MSBA will help us and assist us in uh, choosing an architect for our program. So uh, we're in the very beginning stages of this, uh, of this building project. It's a very exciting time for all of us. Um, we're looking forward just to uh, getting, getting into the program in April. and. Um, you know, we're, I'm ready to hit the ground running. We already have the OPM um, uh, RFQ uh, ready to go. So um, we're just waiting for the OK to uh, to start to start that process. So, if they're in, I know it's really early. Do you have any? If everything went smoothly and yes. we did a project here, we know there's we know there's a, a few bumps along the road. But do you have a um, a date in mind when you're hoping for? both groundbreaking and then the new school opening yeah so it's quite a distance right um yes. it's towards the end of 2024 yeah that makes sense yeah i mean given what we went through here that <clears throat> makes perfect sense yeah and and your processes you have to get approval of each town in your district each community in your district correct? correct correct so that could be is it town meeting approval or city count is, is it is it different depending on the type of yeah, government varies per town okay um, so but you're right it's either town meeting or city council okay so almost hmm. all thanks do you, do you know what year the i know we'll have to pay a proportionate share in north reading sure do you know what year fiscal year that would be that you'd be looking for the funds sure it'd be towards the end of the project 2024 2025 okay. it would be then okay yeah it's very exciting i i mean that the need is clearly there yeah. um the demand for uh, vocational education is skyrocketing and it's always a shame to me that we can't meet not only your school we can't meet the demand statewide <laughs> and these kids really want to learn a trade mm -hmm. and i think i think people don't understand is a lot of these kids are going on to college now it's not like when my father went to trade school it was trade school you didn't go to college when you went to trade school and it's a big difference now and so to, to have a new facility where the kids have access to modern technology and modern equipment, I think is, is critical, so. And I, I know last year you talked a lot about the waiting list that you had. I mean, how, how has that changed over the last year? Has it increased more? It hasn't. We have a tremendous amount of kids on a waiting list. Yeah. Like how um, many spots like, do you have and how many? The new school is definitely going to help. And I believe um, February we're taking some kids, right? We're taking some, but it's still, uh, how many are there now? Do you know offhand? Not offhand. It varies. Um, initially, when we send out the initial acceptance, there are over 300 
uh, students who don't get accepted, who get put on a waiting list. Wow. Um, then students are able to reapply. So over time, through some attrition, some students don't reapply. Um, some might decide to go on to a, you know, a prep school or something else. So we really work hard to get um, as many people accepted, even going towards the end of sophomore year, that are still interested in coming. Has the state, is the state taking any, making any effort or making any moves to try to uh, increase the number of vocational schools? Obviously, you're, pr you're in close contact with the state now for the building project, but do you see any? Right, no, they're no. not, they're not. I think <clears throat> the governor is very supportive of the new school uh, building projects right. for vocational schools. So right. I know last year they accepted a, a pretty good amount of vocational schools to be expanded. Well, I think we see when you look what happened over with, uh, you know, the North Shore yep. school, um, you know, hopefully we get the same thing um, for our students and the rest of your students to, to take advantage of because I think, you know, that school is Essex Tech with, um, they merged with uh, Essex Aggie, right? Yeah. Essex Aggie and North Shore Tech. Right. And now it's, is it Essex Tech now they call it? It is. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, quick question before I hand it over to Mr. Bernard. Um, is the state taking into consideration um, the amount of students that you can build the school for knowing that you have a, a waiting list as large as you do? Yeah, in fact, the um, our vote was delayed of, until the next MSBA meeting because of the enrollment study um, being so challenging. Um, if it's a regular comprehensive school system, they look at projection and birth rate. I think the challenge with our school is similar to what happened at Essex Tech they built the school based on the waiting list, but then they didn't realize how many more students would start applying because it was a new updated facility. Mm -hmm. So immediately, their waiting list doubled. Right. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so now with the new school, they actually have a much bigger waiting list wow. than when they had a school half the size. So we've gone back and forth with the MSBA board trying to come up with a number that's, that's feasible for the towns and as well as for the student interest looking forward. Okay. Mr. Bernard? That, that was essentially my question, okay. is what was the targeted enrollment population that you, yeah. were, you, were, you were hoping the school would accommodate? But that, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, what, what is the number? How, how many students can you accommodate now? And So right now we have about 1,250 students. And, you know, um, with the 300 waiting list that we get down to, um, we could easily go up to 1,500 without any further interest but like i said earlier i don't know what the interest will be once they see the facility like they did with essex tech well based on what we saw here in terms of the retention of our eighth grade students once this school was built it went down from about 12 <clears> percent <throat> on average we'd lose every year from the eighth grade to what four or five percent now yeah, exactly. so it's the same kind of right. effect the kids want to stay here now Right. Because of the, the new facility and all the new technology. Right. And we had an experience when Woburn opened their no, new high school. And a lot of our students come from Woburn. And there was a drop in enrollment at Northeast for the first couple of years. But after, um, you know, the, the students got used to the school and it wasn't as shiny anymore. Right. The enrollment mm -hmm. came back and leveled right. out. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if I can move on to something that's actually related in, um, to the discussion we're having, it's a new program that we have at Northeast. Um, one thing I've spoken to this board about is really our desire and goal for Northeast to be looked at as your second high school, not just as an option or as a competing high school, but a school that serves uh, vocational needs from you know, the very young students all the way up to adult learners. Uh, as you may recall, we have an early child care department where we, um, people can bring in uh, children for daycare services at a much reduced rate. It's, um, it's run by our students and our staff in our early child care center. And on the other hand, we also have over 1,500 students in our adult ed program at night who come and they learn different vocational programs and trades at a much reduced rate. In the middle, we really took a hard look at how we can help some of the high school students who didn't initially come to Northeast for whatever reason, 
but are at a point, whether they're sophomores, juniors, or seniors, where they're struggling a little bit with the career path. So I sent out a letter, I think I sent one to um, the Madam Chairman, I sent one to John this past week explaining our new Saturday program. So we received a $100,000 grant from Cummings Property. And what we decided to do with that money was to develop a Saturday program in which students can come from all of our 12 districts, including North Reading, and I did check today, we do have um, quite a few North Reading High School students signed up and they can do a, an exploratory program on Saturdays at Northeast. We have three sessions and we have um, 10 programs that we're offering. And again, this is for any of your high school students. Um, at the end of the program, we also have them work with the career counselor to explore career pathways if they decide that one of these programs is something they want to go forward with. So a couple of weeks ago, we had a breakfast with, we invited all of the high school principals and guidance counselors to come over. We gave them a tour. Uh, we explained the program and we've gotten some, some great results. We've had over 100 students sign up already and we're still getting calls and emails every day about it. Really exciting, but again, it's free to the students of North Reading, so if anyone's listening on cable TV and are interested, they just have to call Northeast up and call our main number up and, and get some information about the program. But we, we had a small pilot program last year and the feedback was amazing and it, it's really exciting for us to try to give back to the communities in such a way. Can you give us a, a few, I obviously don't want every detail of the program, but a few of the details, like what you say exploratory, can you kind of expand on that a little bit? What happens when- Sure, so we, you know, we have a program such as robot, robotics, plumbing, health assisting. So they would come in and do a, a four hour course um, introducing the program. Um, learning the basics on, you know, each industry. <clears throat> Almost like a freshman exploratory. Mm -hmm. Right. Certainly much yeah. smaller. Yeah. Some students um, can actually stay, have actually decided to do the same program for three sessions because they might have come for cosmetology and loved it and said, hey, can I keep coming? And we've worked a program to allow for that as well. That's great. And so it gives them a flavor if they say, hey, maybe this is something I really want to do. I, yep. want to, I want to apply to go to the school. Right. And, you know, they might go directly into the trade. You know, we share different two-year programs and right. different college programs. Right. And they work with our career counselors as well to help them. So for older uh, students, that's really the path that that brings them on is a sort of introduction to the trade. And then you can help them uh, get connected with uh, sort of post high school programs. Yep, exactly. Because too many, we, we would bump into too many students who were in their junior, senior year. And for whatever re reason, they realized I'm not going to college. Um, I'm not saying it was a mistake to go where I went, but I really would like a little more direction into a, a trade or a skill. And this is something we hope fulfills that. Great idea. Yep. That is an awesome idea. I have to say, um, our staff reaches out to all of the high schools in our communities, and they offer breakfasts and, and different events for councils to come up. And it's really a shame if you're not taking part of that, because it's a great way to actually see firsthand what's going on so that you can make recommendations to students. Uh, I know it's difficult sometimes to let staff out during the day, because we're faced with that too, but it, it is very beneficial to try and get somebody there for those. And we appreciate the fact that you're interested in any of that as well. Well, I think the thing that, you know, as, as um, Rich mentioned, you know, these, if they're the oldest students, sometimes the kids feel a little lost, right? When they're junior, senior year, they're like, geez, maybe college isn't for me. And this is a great opportunity for them to explore some things. And I think that that's the kind of thing we need. So you don't lose those kids exactly. who <laughs> will lose interest in school because it's not going the direction they thought it was going to go. So. I think that's that's great. I'm, I'm glad we have a few North Reading students, and you know, hopefully, we get some more. Look into it if if they're if they're interested. Yeah, I would like to see it a little bit more. I know my son would have done so much better had he gone to a vocational school because he learns better with hands-on mm -hmm. than you know sitting in front of a book and stuff. So 
Um, he's actually at um, the Universal Technical Institute in Norwood UTI, for yeah. mechanics. Right. He did one year of college and said, nope, it's definitely not for me. So I think this would have put him on that path a lot sooner. I think, too, another way, we again, we want to help out with the regular high schools. I got a, a call from some parents from one of the other towns, and they were disappointed their high school wasn't offering a CAD elective this year. And they had um, students who were really interested, and they said, you know, they're not juniors and seniors. Is there any way you could accept some sophomores who are really interested in learning CAD because they want to go on for an engineering um, degree? And we were able to bring them aboard as well. And um, once again, it, it was a, a, a savings to this town because they were being pressured otherwise to add an elective they couldn't afford. And I think they were able to appease the parents by, you know, sending them over to Northeast to give them their, their CAD program. You're welcome to come by, you know, not just drop by. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that to anybody. You call uh, Mr. DeBerry and ask any time. They come up and see what the kids do. It's, um, you, you, I think you'd all be very impressed with what goes on at that school. I right. wish we had an opportunity to do more of that, actually. Right. Yeah. Do you have and information did, did on the Saturday? Yeah, yeah, I can leave yeah, some perfect. some of the flyers. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Did you re Thank mention what you. the oh, reimbursement is right now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you want to know that. Yeah, they, with a percent, yeah that's good. <laughs> good point. Very good point. So the reimbursement rate as of right now is 71.84%, um, which is wow. really um, unprecedented yeah. um, compared to all, your, uh, all uh, other um, projects that are going on. Yeah. Um, so. I think we ended up with 49 for this. 49. Okay. It was 47, yeah. and then we got two additional percent for our, the uh. Green School, correct? Or was it 49 to 51? I think we were close to like 51. So it was 49 to start, and then we got the two, two points for being a Green School yeah, right, and right. That, yeah. that kind of stuff. Right. But that's, a, that's an outstanding reimbursement. And so then the rest is divided among the X number of communities, divided by the number of students correct. per community, basically, yes. correct? Yes. Now, how does that work? So some of your communities, I mean, the, uh, obviously the, the, the median income in, in your communities varies widely. Does that have an, in, that has an impact, I guess, on the reimbursement rate, right? So that's why, but it doesn't impact how much they have to spend per student or, or does it? I would assume that some of the cities with lower median incomes pay less per student for the school. Is right. that how well, it works? We get, we get paid the same for every student. It's the state would subsidize uh, the city or town okay. if they require more need. Okay. All right. Thanks. But we, everyone definitely pays the same. There used to yeah. be a misconception that certain towns were paying more per student <laughs> yeah. and that it wasn't fair. We get the same per I was, student. I was, I was trying to figure out if it was the state or federal government, that, but it's the state. That, yeah, it's so the that's state. Good. Thank you. For, for the Saturday programs, would you accept eighth graders? Because you, you're a high school, ninth through 12th. Right. Would you, since it's in the spring, would you, is the interest to have eighth graders that are interested in maybe going there for high school, or is it only if they're already in ninth grade? Well, we do a summer program for the eighth graders okay. in July. So we have a, an exploratory for that. And I think, you know, it would be something we would have looked at, but the age discrepancy between a senior in high school to be in a classroom with an eighth grader we thought was a little too, too much. Do you think if this is successful, there's a chance that, I mean, I, you can't speak for the grant giver, but there's a chance that this could continue, or have you had any discussion with yeah. moving forward? Great question, yes. We, we have already reached out to them. Great. Um, Cummings Property is, has a great partnership with Northeast. They take a lot of our co-op students, and um, Mr. Cummings, who provided the grant, is actually gonna hopefully come speak to our students about entrepreneurship and a new book that he wrote recently. Right. So we definitely have a great partnership with them. And they couldn't tell us for sure, but they said we have a pretty good chance going forward to continue Excellent. this. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. This was awesome. Bye. Thank you. You hopefully we'll have some. Day. Hopefully we'll have some good news this summer regarding the uh, softball field project. Yeah. Okay. We'll be waiting. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Are you going to post this later? Thank you very much. What? So you going to post this later? Thank you. All right. I'll post it. Countdown.
Okay, next um, we have the school committee policies, the first readings of a couple of them, three or four. So I will hand it over to either uh, Ms. Boutwell or Mr. McGowan. Why don't I get oh. started because the first one, we, ha we, we, uh, the, there might be some, there are potential uh, adjustments uh, based on what we um, printed here. Um, with this policy, we were uh, working to uh, sort of just clarify a little language at the end. And um, actually, now my notes, uh, Janine. Uh, it was uh, the paragraph following item four. Well, yeah, the first thing was the, just that quick thing oh the, the yeah. superintendent for so in the uh, second paragraph um, the superintendent where it says or his designee we should change that to, or, uh, or his okay. his or her designee I think that's how it is in most of them it's yeah. his or her um, so that is the first little <clears throat> minor change we would like to make there um, sorry Diana uh, for dropping this on you uh, no we were talking about this uh, earlier <coughs> and then the second uh, change is that the paragraph um, just after item four, at the end of the paragraph, it says, uh, when schools are closed for emergency reasons, staff members will comply, and it currently says, with the committee policy in reporting for work. And uh, as we were discussing it earlier, we realized that there may not, that, that's a little too vague. Yeah, I was going to say it. What committee policy is. Yeah. Right. And uh, so we uh, proposed the change would be staff members will comply with the adopted policies and procedures for reporting for work. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Is it there or is it in the contracts? It's is that even in the contracts? That is, that we did talk about that and that would, that would I think, fall within you the think that of the policies. Yeah. It really would be adopted. our adopted policy to follow the contracts. Okay. I have some other suggestions too when you're ready. Sorry, did you have other changes or not? That's it for this one. So in the second paragraph, when it talks about decisions to close or evacuate, again, this is just nitpicky, but like before it's talking about closing, delaying, dismissing, relocating, or evacuating. And then later on, it just narrows it down to making decisions to close or evacuate. I just wonder if we should either list all, all five of those or define it as adjusted school time, uh, uh, something like that. It just seems like it's, it's broader above and it's narrower in, in paragraph two. <clears throat> two X policy committee people. <laughs> yeah. Problems. And then, well, that, that was one. And then for one, two, three, and four, should they have colons and then a period at the end of it? No. And no? Should have semi semicolons. semicolons. That's what I meant. Semicolons. Oh, sorry. Yes. Semicolons, and then an and and, uh, and a period at the end. Scott, if you're worried about that, I'm going to have yeah. to talk to you after. I mean, if we're doing it, <laughs> we're going to. If we're modifying it now, might as well do it the As right a way. former editor, Scott, I'm going to. I, I, I would also. It's not a full sentence, so but no. it should be an independent no. clause, actually. So really I would also remind that the, the meeting is, of course, the, the policy subcommittee meetings are open to all, so feel free to. At 7 a.m.? Um, <laughs> I'll send you them. Those are my question things there, so. So just for my notes, so what, what's the wish of the committee on the first? Well, I do see the, the, the point that Scott's making, because we only say close or evacuate in the second one. We don't reference delaying or right. um, early dismissal or... Um, I would just so you could it. change it to in, in making a decision to close or alter the school schedule, to close, alter the school day schedule or evacuate. I think that would kind of take care of it, wouldn't it? Or, or to say in, in making the decision to alter the schedule as... Stated Num about as numerated as below, right. Yeah. above. Yeah, right. That's good. In making the decision to alter the school day as noted above? Yeah. <clears throat> or evacuate. No, that's or would that... No, actually, because hey, evacuation is different, right? That's not altering the school... Well, it is altering the school day, I guess. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. I think that's fine. Well, it says as above, yeah. so you would yeah. be fine. Yeah. When I, when I was on policy, I had you, Jerry, and Julie all giving comments. So. Well, that's because it was you that was on policy. 
<laughs> but the actual policy meeting committee, I bet your meetings were it was just, just wonderful. Scott, it was just Scott. Scott was the only one. No, he wasn't. No. It was Scott and Janine, right? Yes. And, and we're agreeing no no punctuation after the four items. Yeah. I was asking. Okay. Right. You're the English teacher, Mr. Bernard. So, uh, John, you want to read back the, the changes? So I have no changes in paragraph one. Correct. In paragraph two, I have, in making the decision to alter the school day as noted above, the superintendent or his slash her designee, and then that would all continue. Yep. No changes to items one, two, three, or four. Yep. The next paragraph would read, students, parents, and staff will be informed early in each school year of the procedures which will be used to notify them in case of emergency closing and or evacuation. Should you change it there again? Oh, yeah. yeah, I was just going to say that, that to alter the school day as noted above. Same language. Well, the, the, the information that gets disseminated to families at the start of the school year is around a um, late start or a cancellation. I do not issue procedures for an evacuation. Yeah, because those events are happening at a, at a pace that, I mean, any notification is going to be well after the fact. Correct. And then it reads, when schools are closed for emergency reasons, reasons, staff members will comply with the adopted policies and procedures for reporting for work. And then the last paragraph in red, as is. Okay, with that. Is what I have. Okay. Okay. So the, unless the committee feels otherwise, do yeah. the, do the, does do those changes constitute mm -hmm. a reason to not go forward with a first oh, reading? No. I don't think, yeah, I think. No, I, no, I can go forward. I, I agree. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to accept, or sorry, for a first reading, the amended, revised um, policy I, AFC. Yep, I will move that we uh, do a first reading of the amendment to policy AFC as uh, amended here and, and revised uh, on the fly. Second. <laughs> Please make sure you get that correct. Yes. That's the official. That's the, isn't that the official? Uh, Lowercase yeah. f. Yes. <laughs> uh, with the uh, hyphens on the floor. No. That was for you. All right. Um, huh? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Mrs. Bowell, do you want to do the next one? Yeah, oh, sure. Um, the next one is CGA, and this was mainly to update to sort of the current state in which things happen, correct, Mr. Bernard? That is correct. Um, so it really just removed the one statement and replaced it with um, what you're seeing here. Okay. Makes sense. So I have questions on this as well <laughs> and comments. So all of the other ones after this talk about contracts. And it, and it talks about where to find them and who negotiates them. And the title talks about the contracts. And this one doesn't. It just says administrative compensation, working conditions, et cetera. I'm just wondering why it wasn't something about like administrative contracts like the other ones that are after this and talk about who negotiates it or, or, or are you able to see these? Are you able to see these contracts if they go to the superintendent's office? Yeah, okay. they're public, right? Because the, the, the next two policies talk about where you know, that, how, how to find them. It's also the superintendent will negotiate them. Just wondering why this is different than... I thought the title should probably, on um, this should be the same as the other ones. It should, I thought it should you just say administrative contracts. Just like you have supervised building and grounds, employment contract. Mm -hmm. You could say administrative employment contracts and the rest of it, I don't think you need. I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, because it, that, that makes it... Um, compensation and working conditions are within right. the contract. Right? Yeah. I think you say that, and then just also maybe say that the who who negotiates these is, is it different for different people? You do. No, for the administrators, yeah. it's me. Yeah, because the other ones all say the superintendent shall negotiate. Well, the school. Technically, that's not accurate. Right, that's not. The director okay. of student services and the uh, director of finance and operations have a contract with the school committee. Right. right. Okay, and that's fine then. All right. But yeah, the title, I think, should be consistent with the other ones, at least. Just administrative employment contracts, right? 
that makes sense. Administrator. Administrator. Administrator contracts. Yeah. So lose the compensation, working condition, et cetera? To say administrator contracts, yeah. yeah. Okay. Administrator contracts. Administrator contracts. Got that. All set. So I move that we uh, have the first reading of uh, policy CGA, now titled administrator contracts. <clears throat> Second. Any other tweaks? What did you say? Uh, revision on the fly? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All in favor? Yeah, as, as amended. amended. Yep. Aye. Yes. Yeah, on the fly. <laughs> They're all, all on the fly. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> oh, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, next one is CGAC. And this is for, again, similar across the, the next two. Um, supervisor of buildings and grounds employment contracts. So we changed the language there um, and then um, revised the language to be to the current state in which this takes place. So one thing to Scott's point, should we note in here that this contract is also available at the superintendent's office as we just did on the last one? You can. I mean, I, just to yeah, be, again, for consistency. So, yeah. <laughs> just to say, what do we say? There, um, the contract mm -hmm. is available through the available superintendent's through the office. Yeah. I get a motion to accept the first reading as amended. I move to, that we accept the first reading of policy CGAC as amended. Second. Any other questions or con comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> Next is CGAD for the food services contract. Again, it does not have the language around this being in the superintendent's I'm, I'm, office, com so. I'm confused on this one because Michael does, negotiates the food service contract. We don't. Well, we this is not the again. workers. This is right. This oh, is right. Yeah. This says the food yeah, services I think contract. I think that's right. I was just noticing that myself. That it's, it's the it's the con. Mm. Yeah, it's a contract with um. With Char 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 right. Yeah. So you negotiate that, we don't. Yeah, well, we're we're obligated to procure those services on a cycle. Right, but I'm saying it shouldn't. The school committee ultimately we approves. Ulti yeah, that is a contract we ultimately bring to the committee. To the committee and say That's we true. recommend moving forward with um, this provider um, for this length of term based on the RFP. Yeah, I, I guess I, we have. I, I've never seen us have a role though in the exact actual negotiations. You come back to us. Or the previous business administrator. How, how about yeah. how about the the school Approved. committee through the superintendent or his or her designate? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's good. We yeah, do yeah. have that is one. We do have you vote the contract though. Right. I know that. Yeah. But the fact that you you know either you or John is directly yeah, involved with we should get that in there. That's all. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that's good. And also where it's stored again. And that it's available. Diana just said yeah, yeah where it's available. <clears throat> All right, I'll entertain a motion to accept the first reading as amended CGAD. I will move that we accept the first reading of as amended of policy CGAD, food, school food mm -hmm. services contract. Second. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, thank you. Um, we kind of tweaked this. Okay. <laughs> um, so on CGCA, uh, recruitment of principals, uh, the suggestion was to move the, uh, what, what is left of the last paragraph, move it up to the first paragraph so that it would read, when an opening in a principalship occurs, and then we would use the language from below, the school committee delegates this to the superintendent the responsibility for selecting a su suitable candidate who possesses the skills and ability to carry out the duties of the principalship. 
and then we would start a new sentence with the superintendent will faci facilitate a hiring process. So no change in the wording, just shifting that up into the first sentence. <laughs> It was hanging. Uh, yeah. uh, it seemed like a, it was hanging down at the that end. That would be a new new sentence. The superintendent will facilitate right. a hiring process. Right. Yeah. That would be the second sentence of the correct the paragraph. Should school district be capitalized? Sorry. Where? Oh. I don't think so. No. School no. district district was capitalized so. in the last one. That's what I didn't know. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. I like learning my English from you. So. No. Can you imagine sounds good. Student. <coughs> It was left hanging. Yeah, reads better now. Okay. Where is it in the last one? Mm, there's one oh, in, the the in, in the district, yeah. All right, I'll entertain a motion to accept the recruitment of principals first reading as amended. I move that we accept the first reading as amended of policy CGCA recruitment of principals. <laughs> Second. Any other concerns or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, that's the I last one we know about. <laughs> <laughs> Scott may have other thoughts, but that's all. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> what do you got over there? I read them. Get that all marked up? Um, <laughs> okay. Policy CGI. Um, I believe in su to summarize the changes here, it was somewhat outdated and also to simplify um, the text here. So you can see we, we cut out the bottom, which was um, maybe too much detail that really needed to be there and anything that was outdated, updated with the current state. Well said. Yep. yep, well said, yep. So this is, I think, to bring it more in line with the practice under the new educator evaluation system for which the administrators and the principals um, also are evaluated. <clears throat> I mean, my only question was, is it professional development for the administrative staff or of the administrative staff? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's for, right? I don't know. Where is it? The very last line. Is it for the administrative staff or of the administrative staff? We didn't staff? make a change to that. That was no, I know. existing I language. I think it's for. The training is for the administrative staff, yeah. right? Yeah. Or is it the development of the administrative staff? I think it's for. Does stuff keep you up <laughs> I mean, I commented on it when I was reading. I think it's four. All of right. Words. Um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the first read, revised first reading of CGI. No, we didn't revise it, did we? As no, the, <coughs> as since a, the last time. Oh. As amended here, yeah. 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 There's no amendment on right. this. There's no, that's right. right. Revised, uh, yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, I move <coughs> that we accept the first reading of the revised policy CGI. Uh, educator evaluation for administrators and principals. Second. All right. Any further questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Yeah. And next is DJEA, um, Purchasing Authority. Again, you can tell we're cutting out sort of this reference. Um, whether or not it's needed, I couldn't state, but definitely to simplify the procedure. Um, Mr. Bernard, do you happen to know if that is outdated? Yeah, as I, I, well? think, I think it is. And, yeah. I, and I, I think that and also the fact that we, were, we, were, we talked about that should those references change, then it means each time exactly. the policy would need mm -hmm. to be changed. But indeed, the, um, I think the, the more salient of the points is the fact that that language about the $4,000 is outdated. I think we've taken that common yeah. approach across the documents that if there I, is any type of reference to right. something external, we typically want to remove it from a maintenance perspective. Right. The last one, I think, to that point was about the remo removing a school committee member. Right. <coughs> right. If the, right. If the town's um, right. policies on that were to change, then each time the, the committee would need to update its policy. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. With that, looking to do that. I'll entertain a motion to accept for the next revised first reading of the policy DJEA. I'll move to accept the revised first reading of pol policy DJEA purchasing authority. Second. Any other further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And last but not least, um, JGFH, the wireless communication devices. 
Um, you can see here that we did not change the legacy text. We <coughs> added text regarding the, um, the guidelines within the handbook for students and parents. That really is about the fact that high school students um, <coughs> do leverage their devices for various um, school-based activities. And um, there's you know, other various reasons in which they should have their device. And so we wanted to um, comment on that as well as reference the handbook. So uh, I, I don't get this. I point. don't like this at all. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't get it. You can't say they can't use them and then down there say, well, well, you can. <laughs> you can use them. I mean, we say you can't use them. Yeah. But then we say in here, well, we're going to adhere to the spirit, but they have to use them. So we shouldn't say <clears throat> you can't use the devices and then say, well, sometimes you can. We should just, I think we should adjust the language in the second paragraph. So perhaps we could just add a, uh, uh, with the exception noted below. Except. Except. The, the I think the, um, what do you call them? The Chromebooks that we're handing out are considered wireless communication devices. Mm -hmm. And so we have them now starting in what, seventh grade? Yes. So I, I just I just don't know. Well, that's a good point. If, if this, this, I think this might have to be rewritten significant, considerably well, to take into account everything that I, we're I think, doing oh, now. I think the spirit of the policy subcommittee's work here was about cell phone use. Yep. And I think if that definition up above, I think, you know, captures that <coughs> to a large degree. I understand what you're saying about the Chromebooks, but I think those have a, you know. Except the, the second person. sentence of the first paragraph you could describe a Chromebook as you could. one of those devices. You could, if you wanted to. Let's just Even an Apple Watch, right? So, we can right. just change the language. Yeah, to, to it's a simple <laughs> fix. A mobile I think. cell phone or whatever. Well, we what say. about but Apple Watches? Can't they get their text and stuff? You can, yeah. Mm -hmm. So would they have to take <laughs> that off? No. I mean, I think you just say other than school issued <clears throat> device, other than an improved school <clears throat> issued device. That might be a way to do it. Yeah. I think, but I, again, that's, there's two or three different issues. One issue is what's included in this. Right. And then the other issue, I, I mean, I completely agree with you, Mel, which doesn't happen often, but um, <laughs> I mean, it, it just seems like we say you can't do it and then, but you can do it under these circumstances. Oh, that's why I think, I think, so I think two changes. Yeah. One is, uh, is to establish that other than a school issued approved yeah. device. I think I'm not the sure. other change is to say, with the exception of the noted below, <laughs> Right, wireless devices. I'm not, I'm not sure that a Chromebook fits in the second sentence of the first paragraph. I, I think that's right, but I also think Next. that general language is, <coughs> is, it could, could come into play at some point. I mean, it's certainly tr true now that, it, that if you're issued any, uh, a school device, there's no question that it would be in violation of the policy. Mm -hmm. because it's not. Um, and we don't know what devices will be issuing in five years from in the now. future yeah. yeah I just think that, that might become yeah I think that's good language phones if it's know, a school yeah. if it's a school issued device it's approved right for use. Exactly. And I think that put that line to codify that I think makes sense and, I think that's and hopefully it's not language we have to revisit because right. it's changed it's general enough and uh, mm -hmm. uh, that it's, we don't have to revisit it because of technology changes every five years so the question is just where do you put that oh, you could put it so um, you might you might put it um, you might start the second paragraph uh, referencing the exceptions below, and then you might have this might be the first exception. The third paragraph might be the first exception, <laughs> and approved school issued devices might be the second exception. Right, I see what you're saying. Mm. So you say you start the second sentence with. <clears throat> um, Referring to the yeah, with the exception of or with um, I don't know what the right, right language right, is. but with, except for the exceptions, which is not the right language, but you can uh, say about you turned off with the following exceptions. Except for school One, two. issued devices, no, except for the if, except for the below exceptions. Is that except for the below? Yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> what about for the purpose of this policy, a wireless communication device is any privately owned or not school. Um, or non-school issued communication yeah. device. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'd sneak it in yeah. there. 
is any non-school issued? Right, but that doesn't address this, the, the third paragraph exception. Right, where they still, that high school kids well, are the, using. The third paragraph, phones. though, that, that paragraph is, is verbatim out of the student handbook. That I, I don't think the objection no, it's not is the with paragraph. the paragraph itself. Right. Oh. It's that we're very explicitly saying you can't use them, and then we're saying yeah. you can use them sometimes. Yeah. Right. They have we to just be often to, in your locker, but then you We can just use want to clarify. But only at the high school. It's not overly complicated, though. It's just using the language exception, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's, a, it's a high school only exception. It's not a district. With, so you language. could say, with, you could just say, with the exceptions below, noted below, yeah. wireless communication yeah, yeah. devices. That's, That's good. Oh, in the start of the second paragraph? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. With, paragraph? Good. With the exception? The exceptions, because well, we're going to add one. Right. Noted below. Right. And we and can just leave it the same. And then the first, the, the first exception is the one, is paragraph three. And the second exception is any school issued an, or Sorry, an yeah. approved device. <clears throat> I think we had any viewers. They're all gone now. Okay, so I'm sorry. I need some help with the notes. I have, the only change I have right now is the first sentence of paragraph yep. two. Right. With the exceptions noted below comma, wireless communication devices, blah, 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 blah. Correct. Blah. Yeah, everything's, okay. Everything should stay the same there, yep. I think. And then where else am I? So then paragraph three becomes yep. the first exception. That's, yep. There's no change there. Yeah. And without change. And then we add another exception that refers to any school issued and approved device. Okay, so we need to put that into a sentence. I thought we were going to sneak that in behind yeah. wireless communication in the first device. Paragraph. Oh, right. oh, okay. That's what I was thinking. Well, you can do that too. So, so how are you going to do that, John? What are you going to do? Again? Well, you could. So then, so that would mean that the par the sentence I just read would be with the exception noted below. So right. The exception One. as noted below. Right. Yep. With the exception as noted below, and yep. then then the rest stays the same. <clears throat> and then in the first paragraph. Second sentence. You're, just, is you're defining communication the devices. Devices, any non-school issued communication that's device. Fine. There you go. That's there fine, you go. too. Yeah, yep. you're just defining the, the device. Yep, yep. That's, that's, fine that's fine, too. Okay. This, so there's basically two changes. Paragraph one, second sentence, for the purpose of this policy, a wireless <laughs> communication device is any non-school issued communication device, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Paragraph two now begins with, with the exception as noted below, comma, wireless communication devices, so on. Yes. No other changes. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Very good. I think I have it. Okay. So yeah. with that, Excellent. We'll make, I'll entertain a motion to accept the amended, revised, first <laughs> reading of policy JGFH. I move that we accept the amended and revised first reading of policy JGFH wireless communication devices. Second. For the, um, Any other use of devices. further We're questions or concerns? No Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. carries. Just this. Great Thank job, you. guys. That was pretty cool. Guys and okay. ladies. It's, uh, it. it's a process. Yep. <laughs> That's a lot, though. Got a lot done tonight. That's good. Yeah. All right. Um, next on the agenda is the mid-year update, the school improvement plans um, across the district, which I will um, let Mr. Bernard, the superintendent, um, speak to. Thank you, Madam Chairman. So I think just the school committee had established as a goal for itself back, um, I'm going to say maybe three years ago, um, to receive a, uh, uh, an update <clears throat> from the principals regarding their um, efforts to meet the goals outlined in their school improvement plans that they typically present to you the, in the prior June. So what I do is create a live document um, in, um, in Google Drive that the principals can go in at any time from the beginning of the school year until um, usually around Christmas vacation, maybe early January, to, um, to identify the status of their progress. And then I, I compile this report with their help and issue it to the committee. It's really, it's in from Mr. Webster. I think it might have actually come from your suggestion a few years ago, and I think this, this process has yeah. worked well to kind of just give you a sense of the progress they're making, much like I think you're going to do in the next action on your, on your agenda with, with your own goals, but to also, you know, just, um, you know, keep you informed as to 
I think the value that the school improvement plans have at each of our schools, too. Um, I don't think that they're, we've never considered them to be documents that just sat on the shelf and um, collected dust after they were provided to the school committee. Um, and so that's what this, this document does is give you kind of a mid-year update um, from what um, you saw in June. A question, question that's somewhat related to this, but not specifically to these reports. When um, it's another report in terms of the uh, new state report card, are we supposed to be getting those soon? So the state report cards were put up on the website very recently, within oh, the last were. couple of days. Okay. Yeah, for the, the accountability report yeah. cards. Yes, and the principal. We're, we I have an administrative council meeting on Thursday okay. with the um, with all of the principals, and what we're going to do at that point is decide. Um, we we usually craft like kind of a standard letter that's consistent across the five schools to, con to communicate out to their, their school communities that the report cards are available on the website. But it's it new, that, right? They've changed, haven't they changed the much report more significantly? Yeah. yeah, much more interactive. Um, so I where do we find that? We go to the DE DESE website? Correct. And yeah. go well, to- you can go, you can go on our, our website now. Okay. It's on the- so um, Oh, it's on our website? It is, I can tell you the tab. Um, excuse me one second. If you go to the quick links, mm -hmm. yeah. If you go to Quick Links, you'll see a district and school report cards. Tab. Okay. It's about the fourth one down in the left hand column. All right. So, the home page of the website, Quick Links, district and school report cards. Okay. I hadn't planned to talk about it tonight. I'm, I'm fine talking about no, it. No, I just, I just, I, I, I'm just wondering if they were, were out yet. They, it, it just, I, I, I'm going to say it was either Thursday or Friday of last week. I think it was okay. Friday. Thanks. I am so not technology savvy. So, <laughs> so if you go to the home page of the website yeah. and you go to Quick Links, so this is the home page, right? Well, that's the app. That, yeah, that's, yeah. it's a little, yeah. Yeah. And you go to quick links and then you'll see a, a tab for district oh, and school report cards. <laughs> John, can I ask you a couple questions? Sure. Mel, will help uh, Janina out, will you? Um, Where's this quick I found thing? the climate surveys in the middle school interesting. Where's yeah, the we're going yep. the app. Yes. Yeah, I know. I was just it's curious. It's the website the, the app. Oh, one that stood so out to me like a thumb was 77%. Okay. This is from the staff. Agree yeah, that our school I, I, is safe and secure. Do you think that's just uh, Which one? Where is it here? It's, it's on page, page 10. 10. our website. Yes, I see it now. Um, it's not bad. You know, those yeah. scores are mainly in the... Yeah. There's a couple of low ones, but... Um, <clears throat> do you feel like that's just because of today's climate, or do you think it's something specific? No, I, uh, well, I think, I think it's a combination of things. I think it's maybe both of those things, and also the fact that this has not been administered post my presentation to the yeah. school staff that I had in January. I think I told you all about that when we had a, a meeting earlier, that um, when I outlined for them some of the efforts that we've undertaken, I don't think it's, it's I, I feel very confident in talking to you about the fact that it's not related to any one incident, but I think it's just a general, you know, from, for lack of a better word, it's a climate. You know, I think yeah. the reality of where we are today, societally, and I think right. you know the anxiety that sometimes we carry into our schools around school safety and security is very real yeah. for a lot of people. Um, and that's that's my explanation to you. You know, I I do think <laughs> that the um, the work that's been done since roughly August to now and is in is somewhat finishing up with your related to school safety and security around the one hundred seventy five thousand dollars state grant that we got. Um, I think I could I would characterize my meetings with with the five staffs as very positive and I think very reassuring to them that it, we're we're trying to do everything we can around school safety. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm always very cautious to say that you know this we, we constantly have to be thinking about it and doing more. Um, so I'm hoping that answers your question. No, it does. Thank that, you. Thank you, that. And on the school yeah. safety, I've had several of the batch people families come up and um, <coughs> say thank you for getting the lock oh good and stuff yeah care. good oh, yeah. that's good to hear it was very appreciated <coughs> did anyone else have any oh sorry um, regarding there was a statement in the the hood this is all in the same theme um, yes. progress update about the Alice program and the language used is um, we have enjoyed the support from you know the various police department etc while our school works to further you further the use of the Alice program, mm -hmm. um, is there certain aspects of the Alice program that we're not yet utilizing that we're further furthering the use of it? No, I, I would say to you what, what I how I interpret that is um, we continually do drills, mm -hmm. and so I think just the idea that 
as we learn new things about how we train students and staff about the use of the ALICE protocols, that we're furthering its use. Okay. We're, the, the ALICE protocols we've adopted are the comprehensive protocols. Okay. So if there were, and I'm not saying this is the number, but let's say there were 10 components to that right. program. All 10 are, are, are adopted here. You don't, you don't adopt ALICE in part. It's right. either you're either all in or you're okay. not, and we're all in. Okay. Um, the one thing that I think we have, have been um, working to try to, to, to adjust appropriately is the age appropriateness of the use of ALICE. Mm -hmm. And that's more challenging at the elementary schools than it is at the middle and the high school, just given the nature of what it is and what right. we're asking students to do when we participate in a drill. Yeah. yeah. Because it, as you can imagine, it could be yeah. very unnerving. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Rich and Mel, did you have any questions or concerns? I don't know. Thank you. I like this. I like that a lot. Good. Yeah, good. And, and I appreciate you taking the time to look through it because the principals do, you know, try to be as complete as they, and thorough as they can. So, you know, it's a pretty, what is there, 13 or 14 pages, yeah. 15 yeah. pages, you know. And I'm glad you found a process that works and doesn't take a ton of extra time. From don't think it's all that cumbersome yeah. to them, you know, it's, but it's, and, and because they can do it over a sustained period of time. Right, exactly. And something happens and they know that it's going to be reflected favorably in the work that they're doing with their, with their plan. They can go in and do it in October, November, December. So, so thank you for the opportunity to. And highlight a little bit for you. I, lo I, I mean, I like the climate survey as well. Yeah. I think it was just interesting. And something like one of them was talking about, like, are there clear rules? And the teachers was one of the lower ones, and it was one of the highest ones for the students. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking, huh? <Yeah. laughs> okay. Um, next, the mid year update of the school committee goals um, that we just had a meeting on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rich and I are on the um, on the evaluation uh, committee, which would house this. So, do you want to talk? Sure. So, um, we first of all we did meet uh, just a little bit ago, um, and uh, uh, we talked about an uh, an agenda for. Uh, the process for the rest of the year, both for the school committee self-evaluation and for the um, uh, superintendent's uh, uh, evaluation. But um, uh, um, so I don't know if you want to discuss that now or or just lay just or do we want to lay out that? Yeah, we can do timeline? the timeline. Yeah. Um, and I I want to bring special attention to Mel. Right. Who has not <laughs> departed yet? Um, really departed. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that, but I refrained. Um, but uh, if you want to take a quick look at it, do you wish to participate in both, even though the date of completion um, is in April? No, I think, I mean, I think you guys should do whatever you need to do in my timeline. Well, I mean, I don't know when I'm going to sell my house. I don't, right. so I think you guys, whatever schedule makes sense for the committee okay. makes sense to me. I, I shouldn't tailor it around me. We have a tentative schedule for the school committee self-evaluation of um, March 4th to distribute and review relevant documents to the school committee. And then um, on April 8th, we'll co collect those responses, which is why You've been here for the full year, well, so I could, your input, I think, I'm, would I be I can good. probably get, still get my responses in, but yeah. right, right. If you're talking if about you're somehow, if I'm dearly departed by then, then <laughs> <laughs> I just won't participate in the meeting. And you can, if you can interpret my responses so. however you want. No, we <laughs> I won't be here. Do a good job. Um, so then, we see and we can decide whether to yeah, whether you want to use them or not. Right, exactly. Decide after. No, John can decide. No. <laughs> um, so on April eighth, we will um, collect all of them and either Rich or I will um, put them into one yep. document and that will be um, done on April 11th. And then um, we'll present the results, at, oh sorry, uh, yeah, we'll present the results yep. on April 29th. Um, and then for the superintendent, so that won't be the, sent out until yeah. April 8th. So, so that, that won't be begin be until April 8th, that's right. right. And which is the end of your evaluation period, correct? Correct. May, May 2017 to April 2019. Yeah. 
Uh, so it, so we'll, we'll get those documents on April 8th and have them completed. The committee will have the, get the forms back on April 29th and then have the discussion on May 13th. Right. So um, that's just the time that's that now. Point. And the highlighted goals are the ones that you so I, 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 as I, in the past, I've take, I took some liberties here, but in, in, my, I, in an effort to help you um, assess your own progress toward meeting your goals for the year, kind of as a kind of a midnight up, uh, mid mid uh, mid year update. These I highlighted the goals that I felt the committee had addressed to this point, um, but it's it's only my, you know, it's only my opinion. It's certainly was again. It was the spirit of this was just to help you. It's not. It, well, we've addressed them, but we haven't you succeeded could, on. You may not have succeeded, but they've like, been right. something that you've addressed. Right, like the human resources, the facilities manager, or the That's, maintenance. You're mechanic. advocating for that. Right. In the funding of the yeah, budget. Right. It's, right. right. it's going to be an incomplete. But if you, the, yes, those, to that point, I mean, we the, advocated for it, but well, and when you go, that's why on the on the. Uh, um, next page the budget yeah, about the budget being approved I right. did not highlight that because right. we're not there yet yeah. yeah and the way we grade ourselves is um, not yet started started proficient uh, exemplary exactly. proficient needs improvement and not yet started not yet, yeah thought. something like that yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep. so like with the not um, yet addressed maybe. yeah with the even the budget one we could do you know level one which is what we just started you know, so, but that stuff will be handed out. I mean, I think if we're on schedule with the budget, we can yeah. right. you treat that as a, you know, level two or something. I don't think there's anything in here that we've, um, I mean, there are a couple, the freshman advisor, expanding the freshman advisory program. We haven't really spent I much time. I actually have a pretty comprehensive data report for oh, you do. the next meeting. Okay, yeah, great. I, I got it too late last week to include this week, but. Okay. Mr. Lepret did do a student survey. And we, we talked about, I, I, the one professional development that I, I know I did was uh, going to the Summer Institute for the MASC. Um, so there is, a, there is at least some activity mm -hmm. there. Uh, I don't know if anybody else did anything. Um, as long as one of us develops, it's probably good. Yeah. <laughs> or some, did, Diane and I both did the, tr the uh, training too, so that's worth something, right? I, I, I've got 15 years of regression. <laughs> been a very successful right. one. It's kind of offset <laughs> yeah, a little exactly. bit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will say, is, is everybody on the MASC listserv? That's the one key thing. Is I, I am not. I am. Yeah. 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 Not that in the meeting. I'm not sure what I'm on with that. Yeah, making sure that you're getting all those emails. I'm definitely not on the listserv. Like I don't, I don't yeah. get enough emails it's to good. qualify as a listserv. So no, the listserv is good, though. It's um, like today there was one where they were talking about they don't let we should buses. we let people t comment at our school committee meeting? And I responded, what's the purpose of having an open meeting if you don't yeah. give people a chance to comment? Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't, there are committees that don't allow any kind of co public yeah. comment, even at the beginning, like we, and we, we go beyond, we let, if there are parents here or individuals that are interested in topics, we let them ask questions. I think that makes sense. I mean, we would love people to come and actually. Exactly. <laughs> But it's a good, the listserv is good because yeah. you, you often see topics that yeah. hit on something that you're doing in your mm -hmm. district. I the buses, buses. There was a yeah, bus, the there was bus a thing today yeah. about, a, um, no I think it's dead. a regional district bus yeah. contract where they're locked in oh, for five yeah. years and spoke to me about that. they're trying to get out of it. And what they, Well, they went out to bid and they only got one, one bid, bid and right. it was that contract, but right. it went up. But right. it's still lower than other Right, other towns. districts. Yeah. But someone thinks they can get lower. Yeah. And, it's yeah. a, well, and, that's, and that's where they were talking about, can we just do this in private? Right, yeah. like talk about it in the meetings? Yeah, no, you have to. You go into executive, no, you can't go into You know. So. Does, does following Tracy Novick on Twitter count as professional development? That is good. Yes, oh, that's know. actually well, very good. She's got a great yeah. Twitter. Yeah, she's got a great account. Right. I'm telling you, the listserv actually does. In yeah. Ways. Yeah. No, I probably I should I, I do. Yeah, exactly. But Tracy's good. It's following Tracy when she, she covers she, the meetings. She has great. Uh, she's well, excellent. And then she just has random threads on. Yeah, yeah she went on fi uh, chapter seventy the other day in the yeah. budget. Right. And, and then there was one on a book she was reading, which was right. really fascinating. She's good. Was, <laughs> the history. Once Mel's not on there, I'll comment. public schools. Because if I comment on it, I guarantee you five minutes later, Mel will disagree with me on there. So the senior member from North Reading, I disagree with the junior member from North Reading. The junior member oh, again, from North Reading. This was for yeah. informational purposes. Right, we don't have any action. Right? Yeah, and there's nothing, there's nothing glaring that we're, we're ignoring. We're, I don't think so. No. The only one that I pointed out, you said you'll have a report next meeting. So. Yeah, it was, it was too late last week. Right. So. That's good. I, they, again, this is mid-year, so you've still got time, so yep. I didn't feel like it was an urgent. Okay. 
Um, next is an amendment to the Articles of Agreement from the SEAM Collaborative. So, um, Superintendent Bernard. Madam Chairman, I, I think this is a relatively simple um, task ahead of you. I will need a, a signature document from you if you, it's the last page, and I can, you can use my packet if you all, if you vote this tonight. But essentially in my, <clears throat> um, among my obligations as the district's representative to the SEAM Collaborative, I need to bring forward to the committee um, any changes to the articles of agreement of the collaborative, and essentially, um, the change here is that the um, the board, and it's really highlighted on page three of the document that you have, the board voted to um, um, allow for the North Andover Public Schools to um, join the SEAM Collaborative. They, they were now voted in as a member district. Um, and that's essentially the change. So if, if the committee tonight has no problem with that, which it would be my recommendation that you do vote <coughs> to accept that, that, then I would need, Madam Chairman, for you to sign a copy of this that I can send back. Okay. I guess the only question I have, well, two questions. One, is it too early to know if North Andover will be hosting any programs in their district? And two, could this possibly impact us in not, in kids not getting into programs in SEAM because we now have another community that's trying to get kids into the SEAM? The program? answer to that question is no, and I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first question. Will North Andover be hosting any programs in their district? Like we, we host, don't we host some SEAM? We, we, yes, I'm sorry. So like the um, deaf and hard of right. hearing program, yeah. uh, I don't know the answer to okay. that. If they have space available to host a program yeah. in the district, I don't know. Okay. But couldn't couldn't you do some of these without being a member district anyways before? Yeah, yeah North Andover is. Correct, that's what yeah. I'm saying. So I don't think it would be that much of a difference. No, I think they're, they're just becoming no, a but I think your question is, is, is there a potential revenue stream right. for North Andover? Yeah, that's what I was just hosting, wondering. Which yeah. in, in turn benefits the overall company. No, no, I know that. On, on the second point that he asked oh, about, like, no, would, would, would North Reading students not get in because North Andover is now there? What yeah, I because there's more kids in. trying to get into certain programs. That's my concern. Correct, but, but I believe North Andover is already doing that. They just weren't a member of the community. No, they can't, right? If they're not a member, well, they can, but no, they I, pay more. I think yeah. what Mr. Webster is asking yeah, is correct. if North Andover now is sending a population of students to the same collaborative, is right. there any risk to any of the other member districts? Right. Districts right. No, not having, okay, yeah. and no. the answer is no. Yeah. Okay. no. I was just thinking that, was, that would be an impact because on they probably the were coming as, yeah, they were probably coming with non-members already. They were right. just paying a little bit higher amount. <laughs> higher tuition rate. It's significantly higher, isn't it? It's significant. You're, yeah. you're going to see in the next document right. how much the savings <laughs> they, is they, by being They've a been um, a part of the regional transportation cohort oh, they have. already. Okay. So part of me was thinking maybe there's a potential savings because maybe North Andover students get to ride the same buses. And yeah, that, that makes sense. That would be shared. But yeah. I asked Greg that, and he said they're already part of it, and it's already been shared. Greg is the finance director. Greg's the yeah, seem, yeah. seem, direct, uh, seem collaborative. Thanks. Yeah, I see no negatives to this, to okay. this action. Okay. With that, then, um, <coughs> excuse me. I'll entertain a motion to move that North Reading School Committee vote to approve SEAM Collaborative's amended collaborative agreement. I hereby move that the North Reading School Committee vote to approve SEAM Collaborative's amended collaborative agreement. Second. Perfect. Any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations, North Handel. Thank you. Franchise fee, <laughs> expansion fee. Right. Uh, all right. And back to you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bernard. Thank you. So, Madam Chairman, there's no action on the part of the committee tonight. The, the Board of Directors, um, of which, again, I am North Reading's representative, has already voted the fiscal year 2020 budget for um, the SEAM Collaborative. But I am required to provide you with a full copy of it, which I've done. Similarly, um, in, in, in your packet, I provided to you um, some, some summary documents that um, the SEAM Collaborative has produced that I think speak to the, the pluses of North Reading's membership, particularly the last page of the packet. You will see, um, this is the second packet now, that by North Reading uh, being a member of the SEAM Collaborative, a district member, um, essentially educating students um, at the SEAM Collaborative um, through, our, through our membership, nets us a savings of approximately $166,000. So you can see that the benefits are significant when <coughs> districts are members, which is why a community like a North, North Andover is very eager to, <coughs> to join. So again, there's no action needed by the committee. It's just informational purposes. Can yeah. I ask you a question? Sure. Um, what do they use as their benchmark for those comparable programs? 
it's not member versus non-member. It's something external to the SEAM collaborative, correct? So there, there's a, it's a it's a private yeah, yeah. Ahead, it's a private education. But go ahead. It's, it's yeah, great. they're looking at sort of the average sort of viewer to not have access to the the collaborative, and they would be enrolled in sort of the a private program. I think they're looking at sort of what the the average kind of approved of other external state, external, state right, external some other programs. Programs. okay. Some so other it's tuition a, it's kind of a cost, right. it's a cost not avoidance. member versus non-member. Correct. It's because if, right. Right. because if the scene didn't exist, exactly. all the pla all the students we'd be placing there Correct. would have to go into a Correct. private. Yeah. Right. Which Thank would be you. much more costly. Yeah. And the membership cost, I, you've said it before, it's like what, twenty uh, thousand. Five thousand dollars. Yeah, for the scene collab. Yeah. So well worth it. I would say so. So North the end over only had. Three students. I'm assuming they'll probably have more moving forward. They're a much, big, think, much, much bigger district than I we think are. You can expect that. that yeah. The, that they'll have more than the three. Which will yes. probably be a positive because it revenue keeps the tuition right at a kind of a, a more stable. Right. Rate. Exactly. Okay. Need to know more about it. Learn more about it. Are you sure you want to do the next thing on the? Why? Now. Athletic facilities. The, yeah, yeah. The dissolving. Yes. Yes. How do you say that? Dissolution. <laughs> so we had a, uh, we were going to dissolve the athletic facilities um, subcommittee uh, because our charge had been 100% completed, but uh, we were then notified we actually had to have a meeting to do that, and at that meeting um, we discussed our accomplishments and we. Um, then just took a vote on approving the minutes from the last meeting, and then we approved the minutes from that meeting, and then um, we took a vote to recommend to the school committee that we dissolve the committee. Um, extremely, I think it was extremely successful. Um, committed members from the community and from you know town, uh, town officials and Parks and Rec and uh, school administrators and athletic directors and facilities people. It was it was great. You know, we were able to raise, I think, close to $150,000 for the sod and the uh, irrigation <laughs> project. And then we were able to get the uh, bathroom and concessions stand facility completed the way we wanted it to be completed. And uh, they, you know, there was a lot of concern that cost, the cost was um, too high and we couldn't afford it. But you know, the, general, uh, the general consensus from everybody involved is it's an excellent facility. Marty Tilton said the uh, concession stand, the restrooms have worked out perfectly. Uh, they're the right size. That the groups that have used the stand, the concession stand, have been pleased with it. So uh, at this point, there's no need for the committee to continue. You're gonna miss it. Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good group of people. We it was a good committee. We have a lot of good people. It was a, it was a so great fast committee. Fast and yeah. got so that's much that's done a in a short amount done of time. Yeah. I mean, three and a half years. Or I can tell you, there were there were times as some of you were involved in this, when we'd bring it to the school committee with that restroom and uh, concession stand, where I just wanted to bang my head against mm. the wall because yeah. I think you, did you have to job. pay that. You have to pay what it costs to build a facility like that. And I know it was expensive. It was what almost eight, it was eight hundred thousand dollars, basically, right? Six hundred eighty thousand. I think it was six eighty. Mm -hmm. I think it was six eighty. But, but it was you know it was it was a lot of money, but it's a facility that should last. Came out nice. As long as that field lasts, yep. it should be there. Well, so. I guess my only question is, I know that the next big expense is going to be the field needing to be changed. What do you mean? <laughs> like the, isn't the, the turf, turf going to have to be, be redone? changed on in the football field now? Or? No, but that, that's town project. Yeah, okay. falls under the town. The, the town the, owns the... Quite a, quite a few years away. Okay. I think we're about four or five years away on that, yeah, and least, yeah. that's something they have to start. You know, Marty... Marty Tilton actually brought that up at a um, athletic facility, uh, athletic subcommittee meeting a couple of meetings ago, and he's already starting to think about that and you know whether we can raise money to help do that or whether it's going to have to be a bonding through the town. But that's four to five years down the road. The facility it was supposed to I think they had given us like a ten eight to ten right. year um, lifespan, and we're looking at Marty. He was saying we're looking at thirteen to fifteen years. We can get out of this. Because it's it's it's, it's been, been well maintained. it's been maintained really yeah. well. We yeah. have it cleaned twice a year. Yeah, we, they bring a special machine and then they and they, um, it, it kind of it digs down in and digs up all the crap that's gotten in there. But it, it also moves all the little rubber pieces around and, and keeps it and the so it doesn't get too hard. Yeah, so um, we're in good shape. 
So if there are any questions, I'll read um, this. On November 30th, 2015, the North Reading School <coughs> Committee voted to establish an athletic facilities committee with the charge of raising funds to construct a turf field at the current Perry <coughs> Park, public laboratories at the current football turf field, irrigation for the grass practice fields being constructed and the softball field and a new concession stand and storage. This would be an 11 member committee with a length of term terms one, two, and three years staggered. I, I will stop right there for a second saying we did look at the turf field at Cary Park, but right. the costs were, I think, in excess of $2 million. Yeah. And we determined that that was not a feasible project to move forward with at the time. Um, the Athletic Facilities Committee has fulfilled its associated charge. I attest that there are no outstanding actions needed by the Athletic Facilities, nor are there any outstanding liabilities or legal actions pending. The Athletic Facilities Committee held its final meeting on April 2nd, 2018. Minutes <coughs> of this meeting are attached. Members' terms of service expired on January 31st, 2019. As chairman, I am proud of the work of the members of the committee and grateful for their volunteer service. As the charge of the Athletic Facilities Committee has been fulfilled, it is my recommendation as the chairman of the committee that the North Reading Athletic Facilities Committee be dissolved as of February 11th, 2019. Thank you very much. So I guess we just need a motion to dissolve that um, committee. And I will make that motion that, actually I probably shouldn't as chairman of the committee, probably let another member make it. I will move to accept the dissolution of the Athletic Facilities Committee. Madam Chairman. Yes. Just when there's a second, if you don't, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking now that the final meeting really was held on January 30th, 2019. Oh, right. Wasn't right. Because we had to, we had to accept the minutes of that meeting. At that, at that, at that same meeting, if you remember, right. So I think it, that that next to the last paragraph should be held at its final meeting. It doesn't change. I think it just if if the, it doesn't change the motion oh, right. at all. We held our final meeting on. That's right. It was on January 30th. January 30th, 2009. It doesn't change the spirit, the motion no. at all. Right. But just for clarification, that was a that was an official meeting, and it was right. at that meeting that the committee took the vote to right. recommend the dissolution to right. this committee. All right. So Scott made a motion. I'll second. Okay, perfect. And the, the only other discussion I would have is just to thank Mel for the work on that because I know it was not always easy and not. he was. Mr. Venezia also played a, yep. a, a very big role. Um, I, th I think that the, the turf field, I mean the uh, facility getting that built was difficult because of the expense, but raising the funds for the sod and the irrigation was not easy either and we had a great, commitment from a lot of groups and uh, athletic groups in the community and also residents of the community stepped up in businesses. So mm -hmm. it's much appreciated. Yeah, yeah but you worked very, very hard. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you. You were, you were probably better for Jerry. many things over the years in this committee, but that <laughs> might have been one of the main ones, <laughs> the, the, the facilities. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, any other? We didn't vote. Oh. Yeah, we haven't voted. Um, <laughs> voted. Comments? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you again, Matt. Thank you. Um, next, the proclamation, North Reading Night Off 2019. Oh, we're going to get a snowstorm. <laughs> Bite um, your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Superintendent Bernard. Madam Chairman, thank you. So as you have done in the past as a committee, um, you have graciously proclaimed um, the identified date as a North Reading Night Off event. Um, I think the chairman's comment a moment ago is the last three of four years we have had a snow day from school on, <laughs> on North Reading Night Off. So it's been a true North Reading Day and Night Off. But in any case, the community impact team's uh, K-12 action team, of which I serve as a chairman, um, has proclaimed or is asking you to proclaim um, Tuesday, March 12th, 2019 as North Reading Night Off and therefore is um, hoping that through this proclamation you will urge that there will be no um, committee meetings and that people will and we will promote um, quality time uh, for families without some of the pressures and some of the other things that get in the way of, of um, quality time together as families. So if you see fit to do so, I think a vote to proclaim Tuesday, March 12, 2019, as North, North Reading Night Off would be appreciated. I'll make a motion to proclaim Tuesday, March 12, 2000, 2019, as North Reading Night Off. Second. Uh, any other comments? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> 
And may it not snow on March 1st. <laughs> Just not making it in July. <laughs> okay, uh, routine matters, there's no minutes at this time. Um, Mr. Conley, would you like to give us the budget update? Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. So in this evening's packet was the January budget report, which essentially, essentially summarizes financial activity through the month of January. And um, as is been in the past, it's broken, the report's broken into two pages of our expense activity and our payroll activity. Um, you know, not, again, not a significant, uh, you know, new information from this report from, from the last month's report. Um, you know, we're working our way through the winter season and definitely warrants us continuing to monitor all expenses closely. Um, as we've been certainly discussing some of the, the line items that are, are still within budget, although, although relatively tight at this point in the fiscal year, are certainly, you know, teacher salaries, special education under district tuition expenses, and sort of building and grounds maintenance, you know, contractual service line items. Um, you know, I think there's no um, cause for, for significant, you know, concern, but just because of the, the tight nature of some of the line items, we're continuing to monitor those expenses closely. Um, certainly the, the winter has been cooperating as we've kind of worked our way, um, you know, pretty close to the February, you know, vac vacation week, um, but we'll continue to, to monitor certainly all, all these lines closely. Um, as we've typically have done in the past, as our practice, we do encumber all utility expenses against the budgeted lines, and we, we monitor the, the usage and the, the cost on an ongoing basis, so we'll certainly know after the heating season if there'll be any savings to reapportion in the area of utilities. I do expect that there will be at this point, you know, a small amount of, of, of balance, balance in electricity and, and gas line items and so forth, um, but we'll continue to, to watch that closely. Um, we've talked about the food service program each month. Um, I'm happy to report that I got the January numbers a short time ago, just in time for this report. And the, the program did earn a, a profit a little over $11,000 in the month of January. That was um, a few thousand dollars higher than what we had projected for the month of January, so that is certainly positive news. I compared our performance through the month of January this fiscal year to, to last year and was slightly better um, than, than where we were. So, and we were, we were able to slightly break even last year. So hopefully that, you know, that can, is, is a good, good sign for uh, as we move to the, to the remainder of the, the school year. And overall, mails sold each month are slightly up from, from, from compared to last year. That's been a positive trend that's been occurring. Um, on average, across all the, dis the schools and throughout the district, they're about 7% um, you know, mail sold per day or higher, <coughs> which, is, which is good news. So again, we'll continue to monitor th these costs closely and, and, um, and work pretty closely with you know, members of the food service program as well as with Charwells as we approach the, the final quarter of the fiscal year. Um, on the payroll side, really nothing significant to report. We once again have had a need to hire long-term substitutes at various times this school year to fill extended leave of absences. That is something we have grown accustomed to and is, is pretty um, typical. Um, at this point, I don't think um, we'll have a need to or be in a position we'll have to exceed our substitute budget, both our short and long-term substitute budget, um, but we'll continue to watch that closely. And really, payroll projections at this time indicate that they'll be very close to our, our budgeted amounts. So, you know, I think through January, I think it's fair to say we're in, um, you know, solid financial standing, and we'll continue to, to see what the remaining of the winter winter months brings. Um, there is a supplemental report about student activities, but if there, is there any questions on the financial packet uh, or report before I talk a little bit about the student activity report this evening? No, but I bet you that profits from Meatless Monday, isn't it? <laughs> um, so believe it or not, I do have. We, we have some data. We on have some that. data on that. Good question. Uh, I wow. forgot all about that. So we have a little bit of data. I we've done. Uh, I've already asked questions about this before. <laughs> Meals were done. We've done some. <laughs> couple. Of the, so we had that January seventh, which we um, were kind of marketing as kind of healthier, healthier option days over. Um, and the first day on January seventh. You know, across the district, when you compared to 
what the mail counts were on that day. That was the first day we kind of rolled it out shortly after the, the, the winter break. Um, and the, the mail counts, we're running certainly below what their average has been across the district. Um, probably on average, about 25 or 30 uh, less mail sold on that day. Um, district, right? district, you know, per, per grade, per school. Wow, per, wow. Um, so we, they made some adjustments um, and certainly provide a greater variety of, of offerings and options. They were certainly a, a meet options when they, when they rolled out um, some, some other, um, you know, health, healthier option days um, at the end of, of January, on January 28th, and then most recently um, on February 4th. And the numbers were, were much higher, um, which was good to see. In some cases, they were, um, you know, only if, only maybe ten, you know, five or ten below what the what the average has been at the schools, and then and even in some 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 cases, in particular at the um, at the bachelor school in the most recent day on February fourth, the mail the mail counts were actually higher, about 20, 20 or so higher than what they had been, and the middle school and the high school were rolling, were running very. Very close, within within five or ten mills. Um, so I think it's fair to say we're continuing to kind of watch it. But I think the the idea is that we're going to provide the variety and ver provide the option and try to meet all the students' needs um, when we do these days and in, into the future. And I think we certainly learned. I think it's fair to say that the you know the food service program and the director learned a lot from the first couple um, that we rolled out in January and to make some of those tweaks in February when we saw much higher numbers. Um, this past February 4th, um, last well, week. We also introduced a salad done. bar at the middle school. Oh, that's we did, which, yeah. Oh, which we did. Yeah, very, very recently. Very recently, yeah. We had some good uh, numbers on that. Good. I think that started February 6th, I believe, that started. And, um, you know, already they're seeing this, the first day, I believe it was, you know, 25 to 30 mm -hmm. um, males were sold through the salad bar. And that was similar to when we rolled it out at the high school. Um, and that only, only can hopefully can, will grow. So that, that's been received pretty well. Um, it's probably about as low as you can get it, though. The, 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 uh, I'm not sure a salad bar would work in the elementary schools. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, th th I think that's probably true. Just, uh, just because my, I just might, you know, my second you know, my grader loves never have eaten salad okay. as a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. elementary It's school. popular. It's popular yeah. here. Oh, I it totally is, believe yeah, it. really is. is. The staff I think you're as right. well. Yeah. 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 My kindergarten and second grader both like salad. Well, Michael, um, better than that. <laughs> we have a full. Um, so there are the meals we offer that get the maximum federal yeah, reimbursement. Yeah, correct. Right? Do we lunch. have a vegetarian offering every day? Um, if not, could we do that without increasing expenses? I mean, I understand the meatless Monday or whatever, but why don't we have a vegetarian option? Well, you, you do with the salad bar. Right, but is, yeah, does, yeah. is that considered a full? That is. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. But I mean, if there was another, I don't know if there's a way to do another. I think we're option. moving I think towards that's trying what, to do that's that. That's what we, yeah. we're kind of looking at. I think Michael's used the word option a couple of yeah. times yeah. now, and I think we're looking at more like rather than a kind of a mandate, yeah, yeah. meatless mandate. Right, it might be a meatless. Yeah, option. rather than you always you know? see the the chicken yeah. patty or the. We're talking about we're talking about like a black bean burger, like a black be like bean a salad burger add -on would be almost a regular like option or a tuna melt or something. Is there's always an option there? Yeah, I mean, I think in a in a in a window of roughly you know, six weeks, right? That's about what it's been. Yeah. I think the progress we've made in that short period of time is encouraging. I'm not, I, I don't think, think so. we're anywhere near where we would like to ultimately be, but I think we saw early on, and I think even in our early discussions, we were, yeah, you know, the, 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 uh, the idea of an option seemed to be a little bit more attractive mm -hmm. anyway, but um, yeah. I, think you could, I think it's fair to say we'll kind of keep an eye on it. Michael's yeah, pretty, know, pretty hands-on with it, so I think, you know. Yeah, so we continue to work with. Yeah. Ms. McGovern, the food service director, the, you know, the dietitian with Charles was there today, given given some input, and we went down, went down and met her. So mm. we continue to, to work on it. Um, very good. So the student activity report has been our practice, um, and again, in adherence to the student activity you know, guidelines and procedures and newly adopted policy from a little over a year ago. We are reporting out quarterly um, the certified reconciled balances of the student activity accounts at each school. Um, so included in this packet is are those certified balances which 
this is reflected through quarter two, which is through December 31st, 2018. So we generally need about 30 days to close everything out, to reconcile, to certify those balances. We get, you know, sometimes the bank statements don't come two or three weeks till the close of the quarter. So we, we kind of go through that process and reconcile everything and certify the balances. But we have a pretty good process in place between my office and, um, you know, Sabita Pai, who work, is an accountant in my office, does a really good job working with the, the school secretaries and the principals um, to, and, and the town treasurer um, to, uh, to, to certify these balances. And she's a big, big part of this process, so I certainly appreciate her help and guidance. Um, but what's in front of you tonight is the, the certified balances per school. And then the, the middle school and the high school where we have those sub-account balances are the active accounts that are endorsed each year. You can see those various sub-account balances per club um, on the subsequent pages in the memo um, at the high school and the middle school. So um, I think things are, are rolling along pretty, pretty smoothly. Um, I will make note, I'm sure you're noticing at the high school, and I, it shouldn't come to as a surprise, maybe the, the lower balance in the maskers account. And that, we expected that. We talked about that back in the fall, that you're going to see that transition. It's not going to go away, so none of these balances, all these performing arts like Notorious and, ma and Maskers and so forth, you know, the, the fundraising dollars that that club is performing will go in, but you're seeing a shift of the ticket sales revenue. That went to the revolving. It's going to the revolving fund, and that's paying, um, you know, stipends and so forth. But so you're seeing that happen, and that um, that's starting to happen this year. That being said, I don't think there's any other questions. How do you, or can you refresh my memory, how do you track the revolving fund? Or, or that's not something that you report to us on, kind of like the athletic? Um, so the revolving fund is essentially the participation fee revenue and then the ticket sale revenue at the, at the, during the night of the performances. Um, and that is reconciled or, or tracks and related to some of the other revolving accounts. Certainly the, it, works very, it functions very similar to the athletic where we um, work closely with the, the directors involved, in this case, you know, Ms. Kane or Ms. Lister, and um, just like we do with Ms. Mr. Johnson to confirm the, the, the number of participants, uh, matches the revenue that's come in on the participation fees. And then um, just like the gate receipts works very similar to the ticket sales, you know, the, the event happens, they're deposited, we get the breakdown for um, either tickets sold or, you know, a lot of it's done online now and we get a report from the ticket stage and we certify everything looks accurate and gets deposited. And then the expenses just flow through the, um, our accounting system and pur the purchase orders are done for um, approved expenses that, that match what, what the budget was and, and so forth. And how many revolving accounts do we have now? Uh, we have, I would say, there are about 15 revolving accounts. So, and, and on the school committee objectives, we had the mention of the fine arts subcommittee. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah. Are we going to? Yeah. Do we think we need to create that at some point in time with a revolving account now? So up and you, running? it is interesting because on the the athletic facilities, I mean, the athletic subcommittee is um, updated every month on the status of the revolving account what our balance is gonna be, what our balance isn't going to be, what funds are being expended for, mm -hmm. do we have funds to, for example, that's the first place we look to say, do we have funds to do the scoreboard and the dugouts at the softball field and there we didn't. Um, because it's a, an activity related revolving account, to me, it makes sense to have a, committee. a subcommittee. It doesn't have to meet maybe as often as athletics does, maybe it does, but to, so, so there are, School committee members, administrators are aware anyway, but also, you know, I would assume maybe you'd have Mrs. Lister and Mrs. Kane would be member, you know, so mm -hmm. everybody is on the same page in terms of how the money, what kind of money is coming in and what kind of money is being spent. I, I think it makes sense to, to have that kind of subcommittee. I don't know what anybody else thinks. I agree. I agree. I think I agree too. So I, I don't know how we go about We'd have to draw up a charge for it. And Do you remember? Um, well, it was, I don't know how. The athletic subcommittee was around yeah, long before been, I was. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm sure we could. Yeah, we could look how it was set up. I mean, it just makes it just does make sense though to have that. 
uh, is there is there an impact on staff members who are in, who are involved or for from a I know they're already getting stipends for the work they're doing, but does being part of a committee impact their compensation at all? No, we, have, think so. we have no. Mr. Johnson, and Mr. Uh, Lepret, so. our members. I mean, it just, I think it would, it might be helpful for me to provide a little bit more guidance if I were to over, at some point receive like, what's the vision from the school committee on what, what, what are the objectives of the fine arts cool. subcommittee that aren't being addressed through an update that Michael provides on the report. I guess if it, maybe that's something to think about. I'm not saying necessarily tonight, but if the, what's the objective of the committee, and then it might help me to. I guess guide. for me, we don't. The committee isn't going to see these numbers unless Michael reports on them. Right, and you don't report on revolving. Like numbers. I come, I come in, or or. Um, Which committee? The fine arts subcommittee. I'm saying for, for the athletic subcommittee, either Diane or I can come in yeah. and say, you know, Michael gave an update on the budget. We're going to have a $3,000 balance. We're in trouble. You know, we came in and we explained how we couldn't pay for the, the, the dugouts. We didn't have enough funds. We're not going to be involved in that, or we're not going to hear that unless Michael makes a report. Yeah. That's the other thing. He could make a report every month on. Yeah, no, I, I think it's possible. The, the logistics of it would be a little tricky just because All right, this, if we had this, some. Right. If what? <laughs> you, have, you have staff that's in the right. Same, right. You know, and, and after school is the time they would meet, and that's often when, you know, because I would think if, if a subcommittee were to be formed, I would think you'd want to have yeah. at least a, an Allison I Kane and a Kyle list. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's not impossible. It's not a hurdle to be, but it's just, a, you know, maybe if it's, if it's a committee that meets three or four times a year, we could schedule those meetings at a time when it's less yeah, it certainly makes problematic with the scheduling of their, their plays and such. It certainly makes sense to, that it wouldn't be as frequent as the athletic I subcommittee agree. because the athletics are at full seasonal right. they're, yeah. and they're at full correct activity the all entire, year right entire year and exactly. and it's a little more uh, yeah. uh, uh, seasonal so because of that and if the committee sees fit to you know subscribe to that then it may it may be easier with the schedule and I just think it's another way for us to show support for that side That's of the exactly. of the of the student activities too so uh, I mean I see it as kind of an overview thing so if if you met four times a year Right. And you have um, Alice and Kane and Carl List are part yeah. of it. They could bring the committee up to date on what's going on. In addition, everybody knows about the musical, and, but what are some of the other things they're doing? And then we can bring that to the committee. And I, I do think, um, you know, I second what Rich said, it, and we do support the arts, but it just can bring more of that yeah. public. Why don't I frame a little something maybe for you all to consider yeah. in, at, a, at a future meeting, and we'll see if that kind of fits the bill of what you think the. Right. I've seen a lot of the committees have a, sort of a decision making piece to them. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there any decision making that a subcommittee like that would have around the revolving account or, you know, like Mel was saying, we, we spend the budget for the athletic subcommittee. We look at the ways we spend that, make mm -hmm. decisions about it. Yep. Is that, would that, I'm trying to piece that yeah. together because I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing to be it informative, could. it's another to make decisions. Yeah, yeah. that's a good a point because it could right? change the way it functions now where you know they allison or carla or whoever would make a request to michael now saying mm -hmm. we want to spend this money on this and michael basically says yeah we can afford that whereas a lot of times with the athletic subcommittee michael it comes to us and we say yeah that makes sense we should expend that or we shouldn't expend that or for yeah. example the whole you've taken the, the the feedback from the administration on whether or not that's right. appropriate expenditure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On what we can afford. I'm not saying that it's necessary. I'm actually saying the opposite. I'm not yeah. sure if there's any decision making. Right. That's what I would. Right. Yeah. 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 More advisory. I mean, I will say because it's a little bit different. It's di it's a little different. Again, it's the same mm -hmm. thing with it goes yeah. on year round. The athletics. It's it's different in terms of what the financial needs are. Right. Or am I finance. hearing you correctly? Yeah. I'm just. Yeah. I, I just haven't seen, and maybe I'm wrong that there's a subcommittee just for being informative in nature. Mm -hmm. So that would be my yeah. argument to mm -hmm. think about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's just informative, there's other ways to inform. Than would, having, would funds you know. in, this, in the uh, revolving account be used for improvements in, in any of the facilities? Uh, or as part, part, it could be like if you wanted to improve the sound system stage, or the lighting system I mean, or, or the staging. Yeah. I think that's generally when we bring something to the athletic subcommittee it's for right. an improvement or a special one-time right. expense where there yeah. they may or may not be a residual balance for that because um, everything else is just what's appropriated with the um, either through the salaries or the, the team expenses sure. that are, are reflected in the budget book 
that everyone kind of knows it's right. these are happening. These are almost fixed in a lot of ways, and it's when you have, you know, you're looking at did did revenue or gate receipts do extraordinary in one year that could warrant a special expense right. or an improvement. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, I think you're, Diana, you're right that the, we definitely don't want to create a level of bureaucracy that we don't need. Um, but again, I, I, I really go back to the idea of, of also showing that support from yeah, the- Yeah, I do, I do. Yeah. I would I even personally love to support yeah. the fine mm. arts, but I just yep. trying to understand the objectives of mm -hmm. the subcommittee. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other thing you could do is have a quarterly report from someone within the department that, so you have, right. you know, you have Carla, right. you have Allison, you yep. have um, the, the band director, you uh, you know, and they come once a quarter, mm -hmm. they report what they're doing. I mean, that's the other they thing. They have you do. that information to. I don't think, given that structure, there's enough. Those people have the information yeah. to make. It, it's a different. Oh, and the athletic right. 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 Yeah. I, mean, I think I think Michael's doing that with his quarterly report. Yeah. Well, too. I mean, is, the, is it just financial? Or is it more than financial? Yeah. I mean, well, that's what I was I was saying. The quarterly would be more than financial. It would be. Yeah. An, up, up, an overview so of what's going on. Well, how, if you're okay with why don't I take a stab at framing something for you to think about and, and work off of as a draft and see if it fits where you all are as a committee. And, I mean, we haven't had one for, I don't think, ever. So if we, are, if we take a methodical approach to here and come, through, come up with a draft on, I'll try to give you some sort of a framework to then work off of. Okay. I think the other thing to, to do is to See what kind of interest there is from the leaders yeah. of that right. department. Yeah. Oh, the finance take department too. You know, they think. And I can come up with a suggested leader. membership, and yeah, you know, like we'll do a standard two members of the school committee to sort. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you, John. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. The only other update I had, just just more of informational, is we are uh, hard at work this week completing the the FY20 preliminary budget and the budget book that goes along with that. So the, the, our targeted date was February 15th, um, which is this Friday, right before the, the February break. So we anticipate being able to deliver the, the FY20 preliminary budget book to this, the school committee members on this Friday, too, um, which would give you about two weeks prior to the presentation to kind of review that information. Will it be made public at that time also? Um, I, I can certainly post it I mean, if should, it's the committee's it, desire. Once um, it's out to committee members, I think yeah. it almost has to be public, is doesn't public. it? It is public, yeah. public. yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy to to uh, post that through, you know via the website, and um, and that will show the deficits approach. based on the current revenue projections, etc. So um, how, how will it work? We're still the finance planning team. In some ways, is a little. We don't really have a maybe a, a more of a firm number like we have it had in the past. Okay. So the budget book. Doesn't necessarily list a a budget gap as it may have had in the past in the kind of the opening narrative. Okay, um, it more reflects um, what our percentage recommendation is as an administration to the school committee and what is included in that and, and what are the drivers and obviously all that. There's a lot of detail in there like, it, like it's been in the past. Um, I expect the March 4th presentation, um, public presentation, will be the maybe the first time we'll be able to sort of announce where where we stand in relation to. The um, the finance planning team and the you know the guideline we we actually think you know the Friday's meeting um, you know we might get a little bit more concrete information than we've just had to date. Okay. All right, thank Any you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Friday. There's no staffing at this time, um, so next is bids and donations. Bids and donations. Okay. Take it away, Mr. McGowan. Madam Chairwoman, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $25 from Christopher and Margaret Haynes for the North Reading High School track team. And I apologize to, the, to them if I've mispronounced the name. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $1,075 from the Friends of Hornet Productions for the eighth grade trip to Mount Wachusett. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $2,200 from Andrew and Kim Fabrizio through the Fidelity Charitable Donor Advised Fund for the purpose of purchasing 24 new 
team hockey equipment bags for the North Reading High School boys hockey team. Second. That's very generous. Very. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And finally, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $500 from the J. Turner Hood Parents Association to be used toward the Kimball Farm field trip at the Hood School. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> I just got a look. Something. I got a Always look. <laughs> it's not my fault, Cindy. He's the wise guy, not me. I'm trying to make it easy for you. <coughs> All right, subcommittee updates. <clears throat> the budget subcommittee met on January 29th. Mr. Buckley and Mr. McGowan, would you like to report on that? So, yeah, we saw the preliminary workings of the administrative team on what the budget book is going to look like and you know we just asked a lot of questions we asked for a couple things to be moved from one column to another based on you know the committee's comments in the past about what we want to prioritize and just trying to figure out um, you know the best way to try to accomplish the budget so it's a work in progress mm -hmm. that will mm -hmm. yeah. take a few months to do yeah, yeah. So. The finance planning team met on January 30th, where myself and Mr. Buckley were there. Go ahead. You know how much I love to talk. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think we were we were working on the memorandum of, of understanding, whatever we were calling it, about the fluid paper. Trying to you know formalize a little bit yeah. more about you know how the finance planning team works, how the budget is built. We started looking at revenue numbers a bit. Um, I don't know. I mean, that, that, that was the main thing. We, were, we worked on that memorandum a lot to try to make sure we were all in a lot of words agreement. Yeah. 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 I mean, that was that was the bulk of the meeting was doing that. I mean, I think I, I feel like the atmosphere has been Better. A, a lot more positive the last few, couple of meetings. I feel like, you know, we've talked a lot about how it, even when we talk about its town budget, its school budget, that, you know, the school and the municipal are all part of the same town and so I mean it was it was good I mean it was a good discussion and mm -hmm. the reality is our our committee has changed over the last couple of years and you know the select board is going to be having some of the same changes in the next couple of years so it'd be good to have some of the work that people have done in the past put down into a memorandum so that the next people can pick that up kind of memorialize it yeah, yeah. um there was Potentially some good news on the insurance where they budget a certain percentage, but they feel it's going to come in um, closer to like 3%. They're not. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I think, not. Yeah, I think there was some optimism. Yeah. Op joke, sorry. <laughs> a lot lower than they are, or, or, I don't know, I guess. So, um, so that was good. And. Um, that's pretty much the highlight that I took out of it. So. Yeah, can I just ask, in the discussion on the um, memorandum of understanding, uh, has there any, been any talk about other towns and whether they have a sort of framework like that in place? Or is most towns most don't towns have don't. a yeah. finance, finance planning team. No, not don't have all. a finance planning team. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's what we're trying to memorialize is really <laughs> what is a finance planning team how does it work and what is it? you know how do we how do we get it? rather than just fighting about right. you know between boards and yep. i mean again at the end of the day all the money comes from the town it is we are one town okay. and so it's good to you know have the elected officials be able to sit down in the same meeting and prioritize needs as opposed to just looking at what you want so mm -hmm. All right. Um, the athletic facilities committee met on. Sorry, that committee no longer exists, Madam Chair. I know. I'll pass over that. Okay. That item. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say that we just dissolved that. Yes. Um, the policy subcommittee met on January 30th, um, and I'll leave that to Ms. Beltwell and Mr. McGowan. Well, in addition to the uh, uh, items we had before the committee earlier. Um, 
Actually, that took up most of the meeting. Yeah, I, was I think say, we, we were going to we, we had were going to work through another section, we but had an that, aggressive goal that we didn't get to. Uh, yeah, we're at section E. I think it is now. I think that's right. What was so the legacy ones that you had put aside from the ones that we reviewed that tonight. We reviewed. Yes, right. Oh yeah, so the ones that Those had kind of been the leftovers. Those were tackled in the last yeah. meeting, primarily. And we and it took up all of our time. Well, that was a lot for one meeting. Yeah. Yeah, we've been trying. And that's to even with, even with even with Mr. Bernard coming well prepared for those items. It took us a lot of uh, wordsmithing, but uh, yeah. It's good. In the evaluation subcommittee, we just met today and we pretty much discussed that what we discussed. at the time. So, <laughs> enough of that. What, one question on a future business. It's not a subcommittee, but just ahead. Town meeting, it looks like it was, play, it was set on a day that we have a school committee meeting. It is. June so the are 10th. We, are we going to move that meeting? That's, if there were some things on the agenda. That's something you need to. You're going to need to decide. I haven't gotten a firm. I haven't gotten a, a definite that town meeting is June 10th. I was only I asked. I saw it posted. And okay, I, think it was I was only asked somewhere. to see if the it was available. The school was available. Yeah, I saw it posted as okay. something. I mean, it was on. I did that that update to my calendar where every town meeting now is on my calendar. I mean, you, the, the committee typically meets on that town meeting day anyway, but, yeah, if, but we if have, on your true schedule, that right. would be the elementary school improvement plans. Correct. We could either do them in one night or- And the CPAC is coming and there. some retirees we wanted to honor, I think I had we listed there. We usually do the elementaries on those nights, yeah, when the principals are here. I don't know if we need to schedule What's a different meeting and do it later on. It's February. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to it. <laughs> I'm just telling you, <laughs> looking ahead. Um, subcommittee schedules for uh, the upcoming uh, CPIC, CIPC, sorry, February 13th at 4.30 at the Town Hall in Room 5. Can I stop you on that? Sure. Diana, mm -hmm. where, um, where are we on CIPC in terms of their prioritizing the projects? The, uh, we just, the last meeting, we had we did our site visits oh, okay so we went out and took a look at everything um so prioritization is coming up probably okay. pretty quickly all right thanks but not yet okay finance planning team meets february 15th at 8 15 a.m in the superintendent's conference room the substance abuse coalition meets february 26 at 10 a.m in the police station um the athletic subcommittee meets February 26 at 12:30 at the superintendent's conference room, and the policy subcommittee meets February 28th at 4 p.m. in the superintendent's conference room, and NORCAM meets February 28th as well at 7 o'clock at the NORCAM office. And with that, I'll go over to Mr. Bernard for the administration administrative report. Madam Chairman, thank you. So I, I did share with you a couple of things. Um, tonight um, the first is um, it, had, it was mentioned earlier um, but the cast and crew of, of, of the Adams family which was a middle school um, production um, and Miss Carla Lista really are to be extended a very sincere congratulations for a job well done they had some very nice performances of the play on February 1st and 2nd a lot of good hard work went on some of you I know commented already and saw the show but I just think it's nice to publicly acknowledge them as well and, uh, and in addition to Ms. Lister, there's three or four other staff who are involved. There are. She's the lead director. But yeah, yeah they have um, Joanna Callahan helps out um, from the middle school, Dana Cinerati, middle school teacher. Yeah. And because I, I just want to point out because the, the, an impressive number. I mean, yeah, yeah. And I think like, I think someone might have said it, about 100 students involved this yeah. year. It's, it's yeah, pretty wide, wide ranging. Yeah. I just want to say that I went to the second show on Saturday, and at the end, there was a lot of recognition um, from the eighth graders to Miss Lister, nice. and vice versa. Yep. Nice. But I, as a resident and as a parent in this town, I was really moved because yep. the way that the eighth graders spoke about her and the staff with such, with words I wouldn't envision, you know, an eighth grader mm. to use and the compassion that they used. Um, to say like they loved and adored her and then for her Miss Lister to recognize the eighth grade parents ask them to stand um, for raising such amazing kids yeah. it was just a really proud moment to be like yes 
there's some great parents and kids yeah. in this town. There are. So. I was there as well. It was a, that was a great moment. Yeah. Uh, great. Um, very heartfelt, I think, on I know, all I sides. I literally choked up like a yeah. little sap. She's, but it was pretty moving. She's pretty special. The yeah. thing I love about Carla Lister and Allison Kane is that they are um, preeminent taskmasters. You don't get away without doing what you're supposed to do, but they're also beloved mm -hmm. by 99% of the students. Them. They're exactly. very much. They're very much. Shows are about the, the kids. Scenes in the yep. end. They really are. Yeah, I mean yep. that's been a pretty pretty constant for the years that I've worked with them. Yep. So thank right. you for sharing those thoughts. I know that they would appreciate that. Well, and, and just to follow up on that one, I mean I said it before about the hundred kids in there. I mean, there were so many parents that I saw that they were there. They were just so proud of their kids, just because they had a role, you mm -hmm. know. And there were a lot of. I mean, again, I'm, I'm a parent of a child with special needs. I saw a lot of special needs students that had roles in the in the production, which. Mm -hmm. Again, I just, I think it's great that it's so inclusive, which is, you know, something that a lot of schools don't have, so. Didn't I say your son has a role in an upcoming uh, yes, performance? Yes, he's, he's got a role in the Little, little Mermaid school? at the Little exactly. School. Exactly, so. it's gonna be awesome. Yes. And then Madam Chair, the only other thing I had for the committee is I attached a copy of my winter newsletter, which is which went out last week. It's a must read every some, quarter. I know some it's of you. Read. Would you get that to Jerry? He always yeah. He Jerry Jerry loved usually your newsletter. <laughs> he went nuts about your newsletters. Yeah. Um, some of you get it as part of my email distribution, but I know not all of you do, so I wanted to make sure you had a copy. It's also on the website. That's all I had, Madam Chairman. Okay. Um, there's two other pieces of there correspondence. Are, yeah. um, there's a, a memorandum from the town administrator in regards to the facilities um, master plan committee. They're wanting to um, form a committee that has the select board, a community planning commission, the Department of Public Works, Historic District Commission, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, Finance Committee, and School Committee. Um, and the terms will run through June 30th, 2020, um, with the charges as following <coughs> to advise the Department of Public Works on the development of a master plan for town facilities and future town facility needs, provided that the committee consult with the town's public safety departments prior to fina finalizing its recommendations. Um, and so, I would like to open up a discussion as to who would like to possibly sit on this board. I know Mel's jumping at the seams for <coughs> We tried to appoint Ms. Boutwell when she wasn't here, but In other, other, <laughs> other, other, oh other people said that, that was no. not the appropriate. <laughs> I was going to say, if, as I'd be happy to do it, the only thing, <coughs> the challenge for me is I cannot do mourning. Meeting. So if it's a morning type of well, and that's group the that meets, that's the challenge. We don't know what the yeah we don't know anticipated. So meeting. I don't want to say yes, I can, and then I'm unable to from a feasibility standpoint. It could be a during the day meeting too, given the makeup of the I committee. I can do during the day. I can't yeah. do morning. Oh, morning. Okay. Yeah. Like first thing, I I just I can't. Yeah. I have to typically, at school, get them out schedules the are worked around people's availability. Yeah. I would hope. Well, that and I think did uh, uh Jenny, did you did you express interest too, or were well, you? Well, I I thought that it would be good for you where you're on the CPI seat of CPI, yeah. Yeah. yeah, already that you, you know, you kind of have that knowledge make of sense. it. They go hand in hand. Um, no, I'm happy to do it and then hopefully I can weigh in on the time. The scheduling. The meeting. Yeah. yeah, and if just, you if I hit that challenge, can't I just or weren't, come back. then I would be interested in it, so. Okay. Yeah. We, we could have appointed her last. I yeah. know we could have. The other thing well, that I appreciate you <laughs> taking my own opinion into consideration. <laughs> no, that's, okay. I'm happy that's, to that's it. No, uh, like we after we after we nominate Diana, we, I can bring up the other thing. Well, do we want to do a nomination now, or do we want to wait to find out? Well, you might not find out. It would seem to me that, that the people that get appointed are going to have to work right. together to come up with a meeting. Yeah. No one's going to have the perfect oh. schedule. Yeah. I mean, that's so what I, I would be guessing, but that's just to avoid drop-off is a reasonable that's request. So, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yes, yeah. I'll nominate Miss Boutwell to be the school committee member for the facilities master plan committee, a term which runs through June thirtieth, two thousand twenty. All second. Perfect. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries.
congratulations. So, Madam Chair, yes. the second thing is um, it's not really an active committee right now, but at some point it may have to become active again, and that's the Secondary School Building Committee. So I don't know if you want to wait until the end of my term to appoint a new member. I'm just opening up to let members know that that, that appointment will be available. So you can think about if you want it. Because mm. there are going to be meetings at some point. There right. are. Once we get to when closing, close out, and, yeah. closing out the project. Well, will there be How about we do it when you go to step away? OK. But I just want to open it up yeah. so yeah. people can yeah. consider also it. Also something we could, we could probably do in the reorganization yeah. uh, in May. So. Right. But that's going to be that's going to be open. And that, that nomination comes with a subpoena, right? The what? <laughs> no, no. But thank you for thinking about that. I avoided that. Did you? Yes. Huh. They must have watched I the meeting. Know. I have to give a deposition. Um, and then the other um, correspondence I will let you talk Thank about. you, Madam Chairman. So just a little bit of good news. It's, it's not a huge amount of money, but it's a, I thought it was important for you to see that um, um, the district, through Dr. Daly, the assistant superintendent, applied for and was awarded a grant um, by the state in the amount of $3,770 to assist in our curriculum writing to um, accommodate the implementation of the new history and social sciences curriculum framework, which is to be introduced in middle schools and high schools starting in September. So this work, this this grant will be used to uh, fund stipends for the people that will be charged with working on, on the curriculum development. So again, I think it's a grant awarded to the district and I thought it was something that you should be aware of. Very nice. Very nice. That's great. He's always thinking outside the box. And we try to get as much money where we can. He does an excellent job. He certainly does. All right. Uh, future business, March 4th. Well, actually, before I read the, the meeting times, um, I, I want to take a, a minute to mention um, Mel has served with us for many, many years. Oh, God, don't remind me. And... Um, he and I are up for re-election, but I do not believe Mel is going to re-up no. in the 11th hour. No, I'm not. Um, so I'm <laughs> not even the 12th it hour. I got to submit for... papers on the fly. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no, Rich can keep the fly. <laughs> um, I just want to, you know, reach out to the public and say, you know, it would be lovely to have someone step up or a couple of someones, and not to be. Slanted, but you know it's always been a three-man, two-woman member. So maybe we can swing it the other way and have three oh women my and God, two no, men. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm changing my number. <laughs> so, just something to think about for people out there. Just to add to that, you know, Rich, Rich and Diana stepped up. They fit right in. Perfect. It's, it's a couple of months learning time, and then you kind of you start getting it. And it's Reason not won't be able to shut us up, so it'll be great. Right. <laughs> but you know, they haven't gone through the budget process yet. When the meetings start piling up, and um, and there's the subcommittee. I mean, it's not, it's not. We're trying to encourage people, Mel. But I'm just saying, no. But they they stepped in, and and you know they've been very productive. It's it's something you can, you can be productive in very quickly. And I hope we get I hope we get a number of candidates because. Yeah. You know, absolutely. The more We're competitive, the better. It's a great group to work with. Yes, and their administrators are pretty good right. too. So, exactly. you know, easy. Just right. right in there. Yep. All right, future business. March 4th at 6.30 p.m., the school committee meeting will be here at the Distance Learning Lab. Then again on March 18th at 6.30, once again here at the Distance Learning Lab. And on April 3rd, which is a Wednesday, at 3 p.m., the fiscal year 2020 budget workshop will be held at the superintendent's conference room. And on April 8th at 6.30, um, the normal, or sorry, the public budget hearing will be held here at the, the Distance Learning Lab. I always want to say long distance, don't know why. Because so Jerry I used know. to say oh, long distance. I have a, um, killing me. <laughs> All right. This is me pose an issue, I don't know. I'm assuming it would. Um, it's not my fault. My in-laws bought us a trip to Disney, and it conflicts with the April 3rd date. I will be in Florida. I will not be able to attend. That could be an issue if, if I'm Are you out that whole week. I'm out the 30th through the 6th. Yeah. 
Well, how dare they do we that have, without no. talking we to have a us? Second, we have a second budget present. workshop if needed, right? Needed. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I apologize. Um, it was unforeseen. Yeah. Are you okay with that? I mean, Just missing it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's my first time going through the process, so um, maybe we, you know, we, I don't we, know what I'm missing. Maybe we right. could do something with you. Yeah, if Michael we could and sit I, down. We could do like sure. a you know, Is that okay? I don't, if you are okay with okay. that. Yeah, okay, yeah, absolutely. Sorry we'll, about that. We'll schedule that. Okay. okay, thank you. We can, we can, yeah. We'll be able to <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Yeah. Like old times. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, with that, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Yay, good night.